for Friday, January 29th. Um, this is our special strategic planning workshop and I will now call the meeting for order. Ms. Green, will you please call the roll? By Office. voice. Here. Councilmember Gameros. Here. Councilmember Harlan. Here. Councilmember Harper. Here. Councilmember Reynolds. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Mar. Here. Mayor Foley. Present. Thank you. The public, I'm going to read a, a brief statement um, because this is a special meeting. The public will be able to participate in this workshop via telephone only. NIDER and Associates will be leading the workshop via Zoom. However, due to Zoom application limitations, particularly for breakout sessions, the public will only be able to telephonically observe the workshop. Additionally, the public may be computer assigned to the breakout sessions, may not be computer assigned to the breakout sessions due to Zoom application limitations, which are in compliance with the governor's executive order N29-20. In addition to ensure an open and transparent process, the meeting will also be recorded and available to the public via the city website. Also, members of the public had the opportunity to submit written comments. We've received four written comments from Linda Kramer regarding sustainability, from Craig Peterson, um, uh, I don't think it's Peterson, um, regarding uh, Preston, uh, regarding sustainability, from Philip Chipman regarding sustainability, Mark Perkins regarding sustainability, equity, and housing and smart development. Those four comments have been provided to the city council and are made part of the record. Public comments will be heard at this time on items that are not that are on the agenda. In this case, it's on the agenda. If you'd like to speak, please press star nine on your telephone or raise your hand in the hand raise feature. We have there's some feedback we're getting from someone. I'm not sure who it is. Can you hear that? No. I hear weird buzzing, buzzing feedback. Councilman Chavez and Gamaris are. Restricted. I hear it too. Mm. Um, okay, um, I'm gonna at this time um, ask if we have any public comments, Ms. Green. Like to speak during public comments. Um, okay, here we have, we'll allow um, the phone number that ends in 7211, if you can unmute yourself and begin. Press star six to unmute yourself. Good morning, phone number ending in 7211. If you could please uh, unmute yourself, there you go. Can you hear me? This is Wendy yes. Lee. Yes. Hi, good morning, Ms. Lee, you can, we can hear you. Oh, good. All right, it is a little confusing, but um, thankfully. Um, 2020 and 2021. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I um, want to thank you for allowing us to comment. Um, I'm looking at your very good um, printed brochure goals and priorities for 2019. So I'm going to reference that. Um, I think it's good that you had a, a, a very good system of six goals. So I would just like to add to that quickly. Uh, number one, keep our community safe. Um, I would under B, um, I think uh, having been a resident of Costa Mesa uh, for almost 50 years, I love Costa Mesa because it's uh, beautiful and the people are beautiful, but I've noticed that um, we don't, we have a lot of noise from cars and speeding. And so that would be under B, uh, improved staffing. Um, there are things you can do about it as far as traffic calming, especially on 19th Street uh, over here on the west side and Whittier. Um, we have loud motorcycles, which I hear on Victoria when I'm finishing up my work there um, at College Hospital. So, uh, you know, years ago, you get pulled over if you didn't um, stop fully at a, a right turn. So I would like to see us uh, enforce the law as far as noise and speed. Um, and then um, improve our neighborhood and quality of life. 
Um, as far as beauty, we had a beautiful sunset. If you're coming to Costa Mesa up from the 55 and you're right there at Triangle Square, we do not want to see any signs, um, LED signs with moving uh, figures and flashing lights on those three corners. It would um, make our city less beautiful and it would start a precedent. As far as financial fiscal stability, you're doing a good job. I think we do have challenges, but um, stay the course and um, keep, keep the, the economic development out of the fight, the fight pack. It's just there's enough work to do without adding that conversation. Um, I'd like to see under four uh, more outreach to public engagement at, at, with COVID, maybe a page on how people can, where people can volunteer and give their input and also maybe a mental health list of resources in the community um, where people are maybe with trellis also. Um, but um, I appreciate all your hard work. And um, I think that's, that's all. The morale of our first responders, I hope that they have access to good mental health programs. It's, it would be hard to be a, a policeman and a fireman in today's world. And with that, I will close. Thank you for all your hard work. Okay, next speaker is the phone number ending in 6698. This is Stephen Chan. Good morning to everybody. Uh, and thanks for the opportunity to speak. I'd like to um, echo uh, some of uh, Ms. Lisa's comments specifically regarding the enforcement. And I would just add to that that uh, as a uh, long-term resident of the city, that we would like equitable enforcement. And since the 2019 uh, uh, goals were set in our neighborhood, we have not had equitable enforcement. In fact, we've had two years of hell that continues on because we don't get equitable enforcement. Somehow, down here along 19th Street, and I suspect in other areas, uh, perhaps in the west side, that the quality of life is not a pr uh, priority for the city. And in fact, uh, it's our experience that the city actively engages to reduce our quality of life. So please put some effort into equitable, equity. Uh, the last planning commission meeting there was a whole lot of talk about equity, and we have seen none of it. And uh, in this day and age, I just think that that's wrong. Uh, we went through a whole districting process where supposedly we would get representation. We have none. It's absent, AWOL. We don't even get uh, accurate uh, Latin or Spanish language translations for Spanish language speakers. We're looking for equity. This is a 80% uh, Latino voting district. And uh, uh, we would like to see some equity. Thank you very much. Okay, I don't see any other speakers in the attendance participants uh, panel. If you'd like to speak at this time during public comments, please raise your hand in the hand raise feature or press star nine on your telephone. Okay, it looks like we have another speaker. Uh, phone number ending 1928. Hello, are you there? You can press star nine on your telephone or star six. Press, to yes, star six to unmute yourself. You may begin speaking. Phone number ending in 1928. You have the floor. Are you there? Is there anyone at the phone number one nine ending in 1928? Um, Ms. Green, do you want to go ahead and remute them? 
Yes, Madam Mayor, we will. Okay, if there's anyone else who wishes to speak, you can press star nine on your telephone to request to speak and then press star six to unmute yourself. Last call. Okay, seeing no one else, um, at this time, I will turn it over to our city manager, Ms. Frau Harrison. Madam Thank Mayor? You. Yes. Uh, this is Jim Fitzpatrick. I had a comment. Okay, well, we were trying to get your, your attention. Uh, I guess you were distracted. Go ahead, Mr. Fitzpatrick. My phone number isn't 1928. Well, that's what's showing up on the, the, on the call here. Great. I'm sorry. Thank you very much. Uh, great opportunity for the city here. Wanted to speak on Measure Q, which is the will of the people. Um, currently, we have a coalition of a working group of current and future operators that have come together. Um, I've also joined the chamber uh, board and we have formed a cannabis task force. Um, one of the priorities we would say is we encourage uh, the city to put John Stevens on the ad hoc committee. We think his institutional knowledge, passion, and ability to get things done will be uh, very influential. Uh, we encourage, we haven't heard anything since the prior to Thanksgiving ad hoc meeting was canceled. So we encourage the city to accelerate the engagement with the industry in discussing some of the rulemaking phases that we will embark on. Um, and lastly, encourage the city to really step up their enforcement on the unlicensed shops. Um, I know that the chamber, the UFCW would be interested in working with the city and uh, look forward to working with the team going forward. Good luck today. Thank you. Okay, I see no other hands raised. And so we will now turn it over to Ms. Farrell Harrison. Thank you, Mayor. Good morning, everyone. Very happy to be here this morning. Excited to have the opportunity to work together on the city strategic plan and goal setting. Just wanted to thank the public for their comments. I've taken copious notes and we're all here this morning to basically make Costa Mesa an even better and more amazing place. And so really happy to have the opportunity to engage in a great dialogue on priorities and goals and objectives. And just really wanted to thank Marilyn Snyder and Gail for joining us to facilitate this session this morning. Uh, Marilyn and Gail are, are quite the dynamic duo and a phenomenal team. They have worked with over a hundred clients all throughout uh, California and, and the country actually. Uh, between the public sector, the private sector, um, Fortune 500 companies, uh, some very notable uh, clients such as Union Bank of California, the Centers for Disease Control. And so that experience is uh, definitely uh, something that's very timely now with this pandemic. Uh, thank you for um, joining us. I, I'm trusting that we're going to have a very fruitful uh, conversation today. Many cities use Maryland to help with their strategic planning process and goal setting. And I can say that I've worked for cities that conduct council goal settings and I've worked for cities that do not. And I'll, I feel very comfortable in saying that cities that work together on setting their council goals and priorities are, are far more successful in achieving the goals that they set out to achieve. And so we're glad to have this facilitation today. I'm glad to have Marilyn and her expertise and Gail will be recording uh, our work this morning and just thank you to everybody who's joining us thank you for the mayor your leadership and our city council and public for joining us and the executive team for joining as well so we're excited for a great day i'll turn over to you marilyn okay, okay thank you good morning again everybody delighted to be with you my role today is to guide you through the strategic planning process i don't add ideas i don't evaluate ideas uh, you are the experts. Uh, we are just here, Gail and I, to make sure that you come together to determine the direction for the city over the next three years and, um, and have very clear direction that you all decide upon. So one of my roles is to make sure, along with the mayor, and I do call everybody by first name. I hope that's all right. When I facilitated for the American College of Physicians years ago, um, I said that, and this one, uh, one physician said, well, then you can call me Mr. So-and-so. But, you know, it's, it's much easier for us to all just uh, be on a first name basis. And I, that's not meant in any way to uh, be negative about your positions, but you're all important today. Um, it's also my role to make sure everybody has a chance to participate in every group that I facilitate in the 100 
is 100 cities, and the others are others, as uh, kindly was mentioned by Laurieann. We've had a chance to work together in two different era, two different, um, first with uh, Huntington Beach and then um, with, with the Long Beach Harbor group. And so uh, she knows the process well, and um, I'm very impressed with her and her job. Um, I'll also try to take this at a pace that's comfortable for you. I will tell you, we have a very, very full agenda. And so I will really be moving you. I don't put the timeline where we're going to be alongside the agenda. The reason for that is that the Brown Act states that if you're at a certain timeline uh, with a certain time on the agenda, then that's where you need to be. And I need to be able to adjust where we are according to you and what you need. So I was um, uh, um, appointed by the, one of the governors, I never say which governor of California, to a state governmental board and I was the president for three years. So I got the Brown Act drilled into me. So um, I'm very careful about that. I'll try to take this at a pace that's comfortable, not too rapidly that you feel left behind, nor too slowly you're bored. Lorianne Ann will attest to the fact that I don't go slowly. So what you need to do is you need to remember that this is not my meeting, it's your meeting. In fact, at that same uh, group or the American College of Physicians, when I was facilitating their strategic plan, the president pulled me aside at the break and said, well, I've now met an A-plus personality. And I said, am I going too fast for you? And he said, yeah, a little. And I said, okay, this isn't my meeting, it's your meeting. So you need to let me know. But I'm trying to, to make sure that we get through the agenda, but you know, uh, all of you, if, if all of a sudden you feel, uh oh, we need some more time on that, then let me know. Um, also, I wanna make sure that you all look at this as what it is, and that is um, for the city as a whole. Before I get into the details of the strategic planning process, I'm gonna turn it over to Gail Savoy. We've worked together for many years and uh, she's great at what she does. And you will be very happy uh, when you see the record because she's going to have it all there. Gail, I'll turn it to you. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Um, uh, I rarely speak because my little fingers are very busy typing every word you say. Um, and so to that end, um, please uh, be patient if I can't type as fast as you speak. Uh, and also if we don't capture, if I don't capture your comment correctly, do not hesitate to stop me on the spot and correct me. And Marilyn is right. Uh, within about an hour at the end of the meeting, I will be sending uh, a transcript of everything uh, to your city, to Lorianne and to the whoever else she wants it sent to for distribution to you. So uh, you can hit the ground running immediately on your new strategic plan. So I look forward to a good day. Thank you. Thanks, Gail. Now, the role of you as participants is to be open, to be honest, to freely share your ideas, and to make decisions by consensus. Now, as you know, consensus means general agreement or support. That might occasionally mean letting go of a favorite idea if you notice you're over here and everybody else is over here. So consensus is not always and uh, is not always um, 100%, but most of the time it is. And what you need to do coming into this process is you need to look at this isn't the plan of the, of the staff or this is the plan of the council. This is the plan for the city in the best interest of the community. So what you're going to be doing is making these decisions as to where you want to go. And you're going to be getting into three-year goals because three years is more strategic. A, a, a year is not a strategic. People typically get so many things that out in a year that can't really be done. And what you want to do is you want to have a longer term. Five years is too long. One of my major clients is the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power. And I'm, uh, in fact, it's because of them that I'm doing um, Zoom because they told me in September, we will extend your contract for a fifth year provided you'll do this virtually. And I thought, oh no. And so, but I wanted to keep working with them. So I said, yes, you can propose that to the board. Unfortunately, the board went, went along with it. And so th what I've done is transferred that process of face-to-face -face exactly onto Zoom. And the reason you're not using webinar 
and, and public, I want you to know that, is that webinar does not have breakout sessions. And breakout sessions are important where you have some small group work and then you have larger group work, and you come back together. And so that's the reason why it can't be a webinar in which you've got everybody looking and everybody participating that's the public as well. And uh, I'm very sensitive to the public needing to hear this. And the, the, this is a public record that Gail's putting together so that if you want an, a, a verbatim copy of that, then you just let the city manager's office know that. So just know that your role is, is you know, to come together and decide what's the direction for the city um, for, the next, for the next three years. And the public uh, has had their public comment time. Thank you all for those of you that participated and those of you that just came to listen. Um, I won't be uh, calling on any of the public because I've got my hands full with the screen of participants and we've got a really full agenda uh, to, to go through. First, I'm going to show you the agenda. And what I want you to do is um, just look here and I'll, that will help you see where we're going. Uh, and I'll make this so that it's bigger. So that'll cover the whole screen. And are you all able to see this except for the bottom? Okay. So we've already had uh, the mayor do the welcome in public and Lorianne. I've gone through the role of the facilitator, recorder, and group, including the public as well as the participants. I'll next go over strategic planning elements, so that, because not everybody understands what is always involved. Then we'll I'll review the agenda, and I'll go to that um, in a minute. First of all, I want to go to uh, the strategic planning elements. And we're, uh, what I'm going to do is put that on the screen. And this doesn't matter whether it's a corporate group, a nonprofit group, one of the hundred cities that I've done, uh, a state, or it doesn't matter. It, strategic plan is strategic plan. What you always start with is the SWOT analysis. And there was a questionnaire sent out and you all did a very good job. We've got about 12 pages of information. So uh, you look at the internal strengths, internal meaning the, the city of Costa Mesa. It's got control over that. The weaknesses, there are weaknesses. And then externally, what's going on? What are the opportunities in the next three years? What are the external factors that you think will have a positive impact on the city? And what are those that you think will have a negative? A very important thing to have is your mission or purpose statement. It's one sentence that says why the organization exists and whom it serves. It's, it's, it's why you do what you do, what you do are goals. Why is the mission? A vision statement is different, and a lot of people get that mixed up. They think of mission and vision in the same. The vision statement is a vivid, descriptive image of the future in one sentence, what you want the organization to, to be or be recognized as or achieve. And that vision statement usually doesn't come with new clients till about the third or fourth session because you've got to be really clear and be working on strategic planning and understanding it before you can say, what's your vision? Core values are guiding principles of what we pick, um, usually pick up at the second, second re, um, I, call, I always call it a retreat because that's what it's called when we're together. But it sounds silly to say retreat when it's, a, when it's on Zoom. So at the workshop. And core values are values that you brainstorm and then you come together. And there's usually consent, there, there is consensus, usually on about five to seven. That seems to be a typical number. The goals are what you want to accomplish. They're broad statements of intent, which are consistent with the mission and help fulfill the vision. And looking at the goals that you had in 2019, you were very, very much on target on that. And so the goals are the what. They're the things that you need to do to fulfill this mission. And those goals are three years. When I started working for LADWP, the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power, they have about 10,000 employees. So I do 12 retreats a year for them and I can do up to 14 if they need it. And so what they have is six different groups. There's a power, a power group, a water system group, an IT group, et cetera. And we do, we do each of those, those and they have their, their goals. And then we come back in six months and that's always what I do with a new client is come back in six months to make sure that they've been accomplished now, the goals at that time, the mayor of L.A. wanted five years. At the time, I said five years is too long. I didn't say that to him. Um, 
because there's just too much change going on. And we are now switching an LADWP to three. It seems to be more realistic. Objectives are how. So you've got uh, why in mission, what in goals, and how in objectives. And they're very specific and measurable. By when, who's going to be accountable by name for what specific measurable results or outcomes. And we don't try to have, we're talking about six month goals. And I mean, six month objectives for three year goals. I used to do one year objectives and then I noticed a pattern. And in that pattern, I noticed that people were getting a lot done the first six months and then it just kind of fell off. So I started testing the same clients with six months versus a year and found that they were twice as productive by doing six months. And I'm with you a, a follow up time, but then whether it's after that, that's up to you. I'm currently with the city that uh, I'm facilitating again in March, and I've been with them since they were incorporated 21 years ago. So it, it all depends. The key is to have the follow up process. Make sure that you're monitoring at least monthly which things are done on target, need to be amended. So these are the strategic planning elements that formulate the, uh, the goals themselves. So what I want to do now is I want to go back and review the agenda. And what we'll then do is we'll um, as, uh, <laughs> shift all these keys around. What I want to do is just quickly go over this. We'll start with brief introductions. I'm not into touchy-feely, but you need to know that strategic planning is as much about team building as it is about planning. And, and team, there's a team that's the council, there's a team that's the executive team, but you have to be a team to carry out a strategic plan. If you don't, it's like you were having, you know, a football team and the, you had the football team that went on the field to score all, but, but the people that were, you know, um, defending uh, and, care, and caring for um, the team, if they didn't do their job, the team couldn't do theirs. So this is, this is a, a, a whole group of, um, of you as a council and executive team. Then we'll go through the, what came out of the strengths and weaknesses, and um, we'll just, I'll just read through those, and then we'll develop the mission statement. That will take the longest get, to get a group to come to one sentence, but that one sentence is so that people will, will use it and understand it. Then uh, Carol Molina will give a, um, a finance report, and we're gonna, have, we're gonna have periodic breaks because I know you can't sit all this time, and some of the breaks will also include small groups. And I've, I'm going to do the first small group session. I've decided the brainstorming uh, ideas for the mission, I'm just going to do as a group and then do the three-year goals in small groups. And you'll just brainstorm. Those will be as, uh, at random. The groups will be put together. You'll come up with goals, then present them to the whole group. Then we'll get the group to come to consensus on not more than four or five. I never recommend more than five. Even when a group um, goes to six, they come back. I'm sorry, I'm going to interrupt you for just a second. Yes. Okay. Um, one of our council members is having some technical difficulties. So, um, okay, uh, can, uh, is it phone gonna, or hold on is one it phone or video? Yeah, if you could just let me figure it out. <laughs> uh, council member Gameros, are you? No, he's he can't hear. So, if we could just pause for a moment while he gets situated. Okay, or if you could call him. Well, I know about this because he's texting me. I see. Okay. Yeah, so I'm trying to pause so he can hear what you're saying. He's gonna log off and log back on. Okay. I'm not saying, did you lose? 
Did we lose council member Chavez also? Well, I hope not. No, I'm right here. Oh, okay. good. Sorry. Thank you, Mimi. Okay, it looks like he's got it fixed and he's joining us now. Great, thank you so much. I, I can only see this, I can only see two people on the screen because the screen uh, with the agenda covers everything up. Right, so, you go up thank into you. the top right corner of your um, computer screen and you pick, um, your, you must be on speaker view. So pick, click on that and then it'll show you all the, the Yeah, I, I, well, I, I'm okay. I'm just at, at the end of the agenda. So the next steps follow up process. Not back yet. If we could just oh there he is. Oh there he is. Okay, we're back. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I thought he was back. Please Welcome get... back. <laughs> okay, Welcome then back. we go. Thank you. Sure. We go through next steps follow up, including setting the date for the six month update, summary closing. I do not expect that we'll be done sooner than four. Just so I know that, and I hope that all of you are are with us the whole time. What we're ready for is introductions and right. just can I clarify brief... that? Can I clarify that? Um, just because I made appointments after this, expecting to be done by four. Are we not expecting to be done by four? Yo, I said we will be done not later than four. Oh, that I missed <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I, I'm, I, I'm, a, I'm a time freak, so you need to know that. When I facilitated for the Oakland um, athletics, you know, the baseball team, uh, for the executive team, they gave me on one of the retreats a, a clock that says uh, um, Oakland, you know, athletic um, baseball, and then Snyder and Associates under it. But then they have a big um, uh, a base, and you can see that I'm supposed I'm running everybody home as quickly as I can. So just know, but that's why at times I'll get pushy to move you on. So I um, need your permission to be pushy. And that starts with this. The introductions, and introductions are so important because remember this is a team and this is an orientation for the new members that haven't, haven't been on the council before. And so it's a way to get oriented to people. So it's brief question, but give your name, give your position. And remember the public is interested in hearing the two. Your name, your position, where did you grow up? Not a history, just where, where do you say you grew, grew up? And then the last question, is what is something uh, during the pandemic that's come out that you have been able to do and enjoyed personally? If you look for, for on the chat, Gail will write that down. So uh, your name and your position and where did you grow up? And then what's something that you've enjoyed doing because, of, because you had the time with COVID? So what we're trying to do is look at the positive. And I will call on you on the screen and ask you to unmute and you get shifted around on the screen. So just, just know uh, it may be different order than you are, you're seeing. So Brenda, I'm gonna start with you. And I wanna start by thanking her because she's handling the recording and looking into um, you know, people coming and, and just a great help. Brenda. Thank you, Brenda Green, city clerk, uh, grew up Fall City, Washington. And I enjoy listening to my audio books and podcasts while taking my walks. Great, thank you. Okay, Arliss, you need to unmute yourself. There you Hi, go. Hi, uh, Arliss, Arliss Reynolds, a city council member representing District 5. Uh, I grew up in Costa Mesa, in fact, in the house next door, so where I am now. Oh. Um, and I uh, just actually this past weekend baked my first loaf of sourdough bread, um, got Lots of improvement to go, but I think I've got a few months to, to keep uh, working on my bread skills. Yeah, good for you. Thank you. Lorianne. Good morning, Lorianne. Farrell Harrison, city manager for Costa Mesa. I grew up in New York City in the Bronx. And uh, same neighborhood as uh, Supreme Court Justice Sonia Sotomayor. So when I go see my family, I always drive by the community center that was created in her name. And uh, I've enjoyed uh, binge watching Netflix with my boys. It's been a lot of fun. And, and how old are your boys, Lorianne? 
16, 16, and 18. Well, can you imagine three teenagers? Amazing. Thank you. Jeff. You'll need to unmute yourself, Jeff. There you go. Good morning, uh, Jeff Harlan. I'm the council member for District 6, which is uh, Costa Mesa's east side. Uh, I grew up in Tarzana, California, which is the heart of the San Fernando Valley in the 1980s. Um, so I'm a true Valley boy. Um, and one thing I've enjoyed in the pandemic is um, I get to walk in the um, Upper Newport Back Bay pretty much every day something I've regularly done, but especially during the pandemic. So I'm appreciating uh, where we live as much as possible. Oh, great, thank you. Manuel. Thank you, Marilyn. I'm Manuel, Council Member in District 4, uh, heart of the West Side Coast of Mesa. I actually grew up in my district right on Maple Street and 19th Street, I right in and out and uh, like a few hundred feet from our homeless shelter. Um, and one thing I've enjoyed in this pandemic is the ability to cook every day. So I've been doing that for the past um, couple months and um, it's been a good way to like remove everything else from the world and just focus on like feeding myself, so. So what's the fun. favorite thing that you cook? Um, you know, I'm simple. So I, I like cooking like some kind of protein. Usually I like cooking um, carne asada, but mm -hmm. I always incorporate like some rice and some veggies and um, occasionally I'll mix it up with like some ramen or something else, but I'm pretty simple. <laughs> good for you, thank you, Don. Can you unmute Don, please? Oh, I'm sorry, Marilyn. That's a that's Don okay. or Tom, but that, that's my hearing, not your voice. So. I don't hey, think I'm, we got a Tom. I'm, I'm Tom or Don Harper, uh, council member for District 1. And uh, I grew up in northern, northern California by the Oregon border, Del Norte County and Humboldt County. Lived mm. in Sacramento for a while and then came here to 30 years ago, I guess, or for the last 30 years. Um, Things I've enjoyed during the pandemic, probably, you know, my dog has never walked further <laughs> and I've probably never imagined getting to know more neighbors than I've gotten to know. And I think that's yeah. brought a lot of people together mm -hmm. in a neighborhood and I found people more friendly on my walks. They're probably just lonely like we are mm -hmm. uh, than ever before, so. Yeah, great. Good, thank you. Uh, Sue. Good morning, everyone. Susan Price, Assistant City Manager. And I grew up in Agora Hills, and I actually graduated from Laguna Hills High School. Um, and what I've enjoyed during COVID, let's see, I'll, I'll say um, doing Zoom calls with family and friends that I typically wouldn't see regularly anyway. And I think during COVID and with Zoom, we've been able to um, stay even closer connected to our family back east. Oh, sounds so, good. Uh, and you prefer Susan, right? What's I that? Saw, I saw Sue on the list before, but you prefer Susan or Sue? Uh, you can call me Susan today. <laughs> All right. I will. Thank you. Raja. Hello. Um, I grew up, I'm public service director. I grew up in South India, a city called Hyderabad. And uh, during, Zoo, during the pandemic, I enjoyed a uh, walk every day. And I enjoyed uh, weekly chats with the extended family. Great. Gail probably would like to talk with you. Gail has not only been to India at least a dozen times, but has led tours to India. Wow. So I, I watched her face just brighten up. <laughs> so thank you. Carol. <clears throat> Good morning. Uh, Carol Molina, I'm the finance director. I grew up in Riverside, California. One of the things I've enjoyed in the pandemic is uh, going bike riding with my girls. I have two girls, um, 18 and 12. Oh, great. Thanks, Carol. Kasima? Kasima? Hi, I'm Kasima Lee. I'm the HR manager. Um, I grew up in Orange County. And um, something during the pandemic, I actually moved houses. And it's given me time to slowly unpack, which has been nice. Oh, that's good. And where in Orange County were you? Um, I grew up in Garden Grove in Cyprus. Oh, okay. Cyprus has been a client for years, so I know that a little better. And since I'm in Oakland, I don't know Southern California so well. Okay, Alma. 
Good morning, everyone. Alma Reyes, assistant to the city manager. I grew up in Hawaiian Gardens, California, and um, during this pandemic, um, one thing that I have really enjoyed is actually being able to grab a book and read a few minutes every morning, uh, especially on the weekends, and also enjoying um, sp spending time with my son, who's 17 as a senior and planning to go to college out of state. So i enjoying some long walks and hikes with him. Good. And I want to thank Alma. Alma's done a lot of work. She's been in all the agenda planning halls, and then she put together the, um, the questionnaire, which you had to fill, fill out. And thank you. I know it's been a big time, and you have a lot to do without having that. So thank you. Jason. Good morning, everyone. Jason Minter, Parks and Community Services Director. I, for those that believe that I grew up, um, it happened in the city of Long Beach. <laughs> uh, if you look around my office, you may question that. Um, one of the things that I really enjoy doing, uh, my daughter and I would go for long drives um, and just have a chance to talk uh, and listen to music. And for a, a father and his 15 year old daughter, it's a pretty important time. So that's yeah. probably my favorite part of, yeah. of the pandemic. Great bonding time. Thank you, Jason. Brian. I'm not hearing you, Brian. No, you were unmuted, all right, but I don't hear you speaking. Can can any of the rest of you hear him? Keep glass. She's referring to you, I think. Okay. Oh, we can't hear you. I don't know whether. Brenda, is there any way you can help him? Okay. Can you hear me now? Ah, yes. Great. Thank you. Yeah, I can hear everybody going through, and then uh, for some reason I wasn't coming up, and I was unmuted. All right. Brian Glass, Chief of Police, been in an organization 26, year, or 26 years, and I grew up in northern, northern, northern California, so on the border of uh, Oregon up in the Redwoods area. What uh, town was that? Um, it's called a little town called Hydesville. That's how okay. small it is. Uh -huh. uh, for me, I've enjoyed, uh, me and my wife create a really nice uh, home gym mm. uh, in our garage that, you know, it's going to cut our dues, and, uh, but we got a good system going right now and enjoying that greatly. That's great. And there goes the siren. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Jennifer. Hi, everyone. Thank you. I'm Jennifer Lee. I'm the Director of Economic and Development Services. And I grew up in a town called Porterville in the Central Valley. Um, something that I've enjoyed in the pandemic, during the pandemic, is having a bit more time to walk my 90 pound dog around the neighborhood <laughs> with my husband and also to figure out for the first time how to work Zoom to teach um, martial arts and women's self-defense classes, which I used to be able to do in person. <laughs> oh, that's great, good. Thank you, Jennifer. Katrina. Good morning, I'm Katrina Foley. I've been with this organization since 1999. Wow. Uh, planning commissioner, city council member, and Human Relations Committee, Child Care Youth Services Committee, and now Mayor. Um, I uh, grew up in Ojai, and a tiny little town. And when you leave Ojai, you usually don't go back. <laughs> um, although I still do have connections to Ojai with all of my close girlfriends that I've, you know, we've kind of had our little tribe over the years, and their parents still live there. Um, and something that I've enjoyed um, over the COVID, hmm. uh, I'm gonna have to break it into two parts because I think there was a summer and winter of COVID. The summer, even though that seemed like the worst time for me, you know, I was able to be in my backyard almost every day. My husband was working from home for the first time we were working from home together. Um, he's a teacher and so that was um, kind of enjoyable that we were able to spend more time during the day together because we never see each other during the day. Um, and then during the winter, I think what I would have enjoyed most is that my youngest son, who's living at home still due to the pandemic, um, we were able to spend a lot more time together, talk a lot more, and um, just kind of hang out together more. Oh, great. How old is he, Katrina? 20. 20. Okay, good. Thank you. Dan. Well, good morning. Good to see you, Marilyn, and uh, looking forward to a great day. Uh, Dan Stefano, Fire Chief uh, 
I am in my working on my eighth year here at the city. Uh, before that, uh, I was in Laguna Beach for 18 years. Um, I was born in Glendale uh, and then moved here at age four with mom and three brothers and have been living in the Newport uh, Mesa area for the balance of time. A lot of, lot of strong roots in the community, played Little League, uh, Team Winkle Park, went to Orange Coast College. So I'm um, looking forward to today. Great. Thank you. Lauren. Good morning. Lauren Gameros, Costa Mesa City Council member for District 2. So um, I, I came here summer of fourth grade. So I've been here for quite a while. And uh, a couple of things that I've really enjoyed is uh, I got a new electric bike. So I got to rediscover the city on a bike and bring my kids along with me. So they got to do it with me. And something else I got to do um, is I really got to discover a great group of people at the city of Costa Mesa. The staff here is absolutely wonderful. And if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be able to be where I'm at right now uh, doing what I do. So those two things have really had a huge impact on me. Thank you. Good. And, and how old are your kids, Lauren? I have a six-year-old and a 13-year-old. Thank you. And last but not least, Steve. Good morning. I'm Steve Ely. I'm the Information Technology Director for the city. I, um, I grew up in uh, southeastern Pennsylvania around Amish country. Um, I have uh, uh, really uh, what I've learned is uh, I've, I've got a lot more neighbors than I knew about because I, uh, like Don Harper, I walked around the neighborhood quite a bit during this pandemic with my dog and my sons. And uh, we, yeah, we've met a lot of neighbors that have lived in this neighborhood for 30 years and I've never even talked to. So it was, it's been quite an experience for this last year or so. But I'm looking forward to today. Thank you. How old are your kids, Steve? Uh, 23 and 22. Okay, lots of, lots of kids here. Well, thank you. I hope you got Ms. Barlow. Let's did not. somebody. What? Kim Barlow and really? House Member Mar. Really? See, oh, the, the, yeah. that's what happens with Zoom. It drives me crazy because I thought, okay, now I've got everybody. And then all of a sudden you've all switched. So Andrea, talk, uh, just hold your hand up who, who didn't get introduced. Sure didn't want to leave anybody out. Okay, Andrea, go for it. Thank you. Um, Andrea Mar, I represent District 3 on the City Council. So that's the area around the fairgrounds. Um, my dad was State Department when I was a kid, so I actually grew up in Rome, Italy. Um, oh, nice. and would get shipped back to Colorado for summers with the grandparents. Um, so actually this space here is my favorite part about the pandemic. This was a guest room. I'd always work from home, but from the dining room table like once a week. And so the idea of having my, my own space to do yoga, meditate, work, <laughs> put my sewing machine, all this stuff is like finally nice to have. Um, so yeah, that's, that's been my favorite part. Great. Thank you, Andrea. Now, does anybody else get forgotten? So I apologize. I forgot. Barlow. To Kim, go ahead. Who did? Who else? Kim Barlow. Unmute yourself. I can't find Kim. Let's we'll see. Where are you, Kim? Yes, well, just stop talking, then you'll I'm see. I'm here. Hi, Mary. Oh, there you are, Kim. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to leave you out. That's okay. I'm used to it. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, my name is Kim Barlow. I'm the city attorney. Um, I have, uh, I grew up in Las Vegas and Southern California, mostly in the Inland Empire, uh, but I've lived in Orange County since I graduated from high school, uh, specifically in Fullerton. Um, and my, uh, I've done so many things during this uh, uh, COVID time, uh, but one of the things that's been kind of really fun is really getting my house organized. Uh, the best part of which is boxing up my kids' stuff Mm -hmm. uh, so that they can come and take it away. Um, it's, 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 you know, when you, when you have a, when you've had a bunch of kids at home and they all grow up and they leave and they leave their stuff behind, um, it, it feels like your house gets very cluttered and I'm, and I'm, I'm grateful that I'm able to um, make them take it away. And how many kids do you have? I have three. I have um, an, uh, my oldest son, um, is uh, too old for me to say out loud. And my, <laughs> my, uh, my twins are uh, 30. I have a boy and a girl twin. Great, great. We well, didn't mean to leave you out. Now, everybody else has been right. included, right? I hope you enjoyed that. I bet you're thinking now, I thought she said she was in a rush to get through this agenda. How come we're spending all this time? 
Well, the fact of the matter is, in, in working together, you're either a collection of individuals that all want your own ideas to go forward, or you become a team. And one of the ways to become a team is to know each other. And you don't have to know a whole lot about each other, but you're more careful with people if you know them somewhat than if you don't. So it's a part of the team building, getting to know you process. And I always enjoy it. I'm nosy, so that's my favorite part of the whole retreat. Okay, let me just show you where we are now. We're going to go through the SWAT, and then what we're going to do is uh, take our first break. So let me just show you where we are. We've, we're down to here now, and we're going to do this block right here, reading through the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Now, because the public can't see this, I'm going to read it all. And just uh, know I'll be grabbing water every once in a while because it's, what, 12 pages, Gail? Okay, so Gail's going to put it on the screen. And this is the base. You need, to, you need to, first of all, we always ask the question, what are the positives first? Just like I said to you, what are the positives of, out, of the, out of COVID? No matter how bad things are, there are things that are good. Some of you ended up writing, I asked for words or phrases. <laughs> Some of you ended up writing paragraphs. And uh, so next time when we do this, we'll, we'll need words or phrases. Uh, the strengths and accomplishments, this notice here, public, this says as a heading, brainstorm list of perceptions provided by the participants. So you don't know who said what, that's the way it's supposed to be. And, and what you just know is we're just brainstorming never means that you evaluate, you're, you're just taking in the information. So goal uh, on strengths and accomplishments, and these are internal, meaning it's something that's, that the city has done, accomplishment. Goals help us focus on budget direction and keep us focused for the most part. Accomplished all but item G in goal one, which is community safety with efforts continuing. On track to complete most of goal two, neighborhoods quality of life, but for delays due to pandemic. Item FGHI, need more attention. And that would really be a, a, a challenge, but that's okay. Accomplish much of goal three, fiscal, but the critical work of economic development plan in item B and outside experts in item F. Goal four, housing, fully in play. Goal five, mobility and parking, needs the most attention of all the goals. Goal six, good uh, government, community engagement well underway. And COVID provided more opportunities to engage more and more creative ways, but we can do better. That city council podcast, pat, podcast is so easy, yet seems to staff so hard to happen. Despite COVID, we continued to, to stay focused on our priorities. Staffing goals continued despite COVID. Fiscal health despite COVID overall. And, the, and for those of you in the public, these are all separate ones. And you'll see duplications because it wasn't changed. The idea was to take, and then you can see a pattern who uh, agreed with each other on strengths and weaknesses. Fiscal health despite, health despite COVID, overall handling of COVID, impressive responsiveness to changing environment, demonstrated leadership by senior leadership team, progress on sustainability, lead, lead LED for cities, charging stations, et cetera, handling of budget and response to period of financial unsecurity, public safety response to BLM protests, and sound surrounding discussions of policy, police policy, finishing the homeless shelter and making good progress in the downtown area. Our city staff is flexible and dedicated. We are financially in a good place compared to other cities. Homeless shelter in progress. And now Gail's moving the page up for me to see it. Um, regulating sober, uh, sober living homes, limiting hours of operation of aviation, managing the budget through the pandemic, constructing a permanent homeless shelter, administering and approving emergency funding for local businesses, successfully defending lawsuits challenging the sober living home and ordinance, cut or deferred expenses to create surplus for fiscal year 2019, 2021, 20, 20, I mean, hired ex, ex, must be excellent, city manager and management team, Successful opening or operation of temporary bridge shelter and plan for permanent shelter with public support. Surviving COVID-19 with relatively healthy financials. Engaged, committed, resourceful, caring city council and staff. Upgrades in critical public safety infrastructure systems such as new police car, in-car 
audio, video, and body worn camera BWC system, fire range remodel design, CCTV security upgrade, and VESTA phone system. Uh, improved staffing in police department with 130 sworn for first time since 2012. Modernized emergency operations center, the, e, uh, the EOC technology, equipment, and connectivity. Fire and rescue responded to over 12,000 emergency incidents in 2020. Keep going. Fire and, re and uh, rescue responded on over 20 significant statewide related wildland, wildland fire incidents, including over 160 cumulative days for those deployments and a historic year of wildfires. The first Orange County city to deliver a CERT, uh, basic training utilizing the new curriculum. Police and code enforcement response to COVID complaints provided informational outreach and issued uh, administrative citations for violations of public health guidelines. Partnered with the Orange County Fire Services to establish and operate the 10 VIVD vaccination pairing fire parent pod at Central Net Regional Training Facility in Huntington Beach. Fire and Rescue completed 6,843 uh, unique community outreach engagement contacts with COVID-19 precautions. Um, completed street habilitation and slurry seal of 4,805,174 square feet of pavement citywide. Continued achievement of pavement condition index goal of over 85 with a score of 86.5. Reconstruction of over 50,000 square feet of alleys. Prioritize median reconstruction in key areas of the city, such as the Harbor Boulevard median project, 11 medians, 18,700 square feet. Traffic signal synchronization, synchronization projects along Clearview Road, Sunflower Avenue, and Bear Street, and, and received over $2 million in grant funding for these projects. Completed draft South BECA parking study. Initiated pedestrian master plan and citywide parking study. Adams Avenue new multi-purpose trail project that is currently under design with a strategic community engagement plan. Procured grant funding of over 1.1 million for Merrimack Way bicycle facility improvements designed and currently under construction. Completed Bear Street rehabilitation project including new bicycle lanes and bike box at Baker Street, Bear Street intersection. Completed $36 million Lions Park projects, including the Donald Duncan Library and the Norma Herzog Community Center. And we go up to the next sheet. And I'm going to take a glass of water <laughs> for a drink here. Um, partnered with the city, County of Orange to build a new park, Perez Park. Installation of bike racks at several city facilities. Set sidewalk vending regulations in compliance with SB 946, which intended to increase economic opportunities, uh, opportunities to low income and migrant communities. Voters passed Measure Q in the 2020 November ballot, thereby increasing the city's general fund revenues. Approved over 30 manu marijuana manufacturing and distribution businesses in Costa Mesa in compliance with Measure X created virtual recreation series with 11 individual episodes to help engage kids and families and provide alternate, alternate programming during the pandemic. Launched the Costa Mesa Business Association Collaborative, BAC, BAC, and Restore Costa Mesa Recovery Team to support businesses. Series of urgency, urgency ordinances with extensions temporarily relaxing requirements to allow for food banks, food security, and outdoor dining for restaurants religious services, retail, and other similar uses during COVID. Redirected staff to expedite over 70 temporary use permits called TUPs to allow, outlaw, allow for outdoor uses in parking areas during COVID. Weighed fees for an initial period to encourage early compliance. Successfully implemented the Small Business Relief Grant Program issuing checks for 2.7 million to 256 Costa Mesa's small businesses. You'll have all of this in writing. Uh, so I know it's a lot to remember. <laughs> Expedited launch of a city funded bridge grant program issuing $500,000 in grant funds to local businesses within seven days. Remaining 
phases underway. When complete, Costa Mesa will have distributed $5 million to support local businesses. Continued growing social media engagement with a 34% increase on Facebook. And 183% increase on Instagram. 31% increase on Twitter. 1,161,870 website page views. 203,779 press release uh, views. Producing unique, accessible content to help inform residents with 95 press releases, 50 issues of the City Hall Snapshot, 95 Costa Mesa Minute videos, um, 40 El Minuto, I think I mispronounced that, videos, coordinating with Latino Health Access and 360 Clinic to provide a bilingual testing at the Senior Center, coordinating with the Ori County of Orange for a super site for testing at the Orange County Fairgrounds, as well as potential vaccine locations, coordinated virtual town halls and promotional web, webinars and other meetings to keep residences and business informed, 23 virtual town halls, 19 restore Costa Mesa meetings, prioritized efforts on short-term rentals, study session and expedited a moratorium, expedited code amendment and ongoing long-term policy planning to be completed in 2021, successfully administered CDBG and home federal grant funding programs, adopted the city's CAPER, C-A-P-E-R, an annual action plan, including funding over 10 public service organizations in the city's shelter project, adopted the city's 2024 consolidated plan, expedited a substantial amendment to the annual action plan to accept federal CDBG dash CV funding, housed a total of 166 individuals since April 2019, 74 from the temporary shelter program and 92 through street outreach, expedited a dip adoption of a moratorium prohibiting, prohibiting evictions in the city due to COVID-19. Uh, I can't see that one, Gail, if you can run the page up. You see? Okay, let me go back here. I don't know whether I got the, did I get the one before? Go down one and see if I got that one, please. I'm not sure. I think that may be the one I saw in the middle. Uh, maybe not. Okay. Uh, zero COVID po positive cases within Bridge Shelter at Lighthouse Church. Successfully funded and launched the tenant-based rental assistance program and the GAP rental assistance program, both completely new programs. 387000 and 400000 dollars from CDBG CV. Fiscal year 2019-20 general fund end results in $167,000 in a positive balance, not dipping into reserves. <clears throat> Recipient of the Governor Finance Officers Association GFOA Excellence in Financial Reporting Award for the City's Comprehensive Annual Financial Report CAFR ending June 30th. 2019 with 22 consecutive years as a recipient of this prestigious award. So this award is Excellence in Financial Reporting. Uh, reception of, of C GFOA and CSMFO, California Society of Municipal Officers, Excellence in Financial Reporting Awards for the City 2019-2020. Adopted budget document with 20 to 22 consecutive years as a recipient of these prestigious awards. Successfully submitted a balanced budget. I hope you're all listening to this. Fiscal year 2021 budget to the City Council with sufficient triggers in place to proactively adjust the budget if needed to address unforeseen additional revenue loss. Secured $1 million in state grant funding for the Lions Park project. Secured $80,000 in FEMA assistance for firefighters grant program drivers, I'm not sure what that meant, awarded $650,000 in state grant funding for housing planning work, increasing general fund revenues, proactively identified and implemented a cost containment plan to get ahead of the physical impact, fiscal impact of the worldwide pandemic COVID-19, essentially shelved the fiscal year 2021 proposed budget process in March and realign the proposed budget within 30 days to get ahead of the continued fiscal impacts of COVID-19. Continuous meetings with FEMA representative to discuss projects submitted and documentations provided to support cost recovery requests. Is that the end, Gail? Oh, no, it's not. Okay. Carolyn? Yes. 
So um, I didn't realize just how extensive um, all of this would be when we put it together from all the department heads and the council. So the good news is we have a lot of accomplishments, um, but in the interest of time, can we, I know that we can provide this to the council and the public for the public record as well, um, but it, it would, I'm okay. I think we'd all be okay if we moved on to the next part of, of the agenda, if that's okay with you. I know you're doing this for the sake of the public since they can't see what's on the screen, but I'm sure that we'll provide this and there'll be ample opportunity for us to really um, get this out and make sure that everybody's aware of our accomplishments during the last you know, year and a half, if that's-, if yeah, that's I, you know, I appreciate that. I think what is necessary is that, that we- Marilyn, like, sorry. yeah. Could I just may I just say this? I wanted to ask the council because um, I don't, you know, I don't want my impatience about ha having to listen to this <laughs> dictate how it goes. But maybe the council wants us to continue to do this. I don't okay. know. Let me make a suggestion that's in between. What I've done with other groups is they read it, you know, on their own. And if you're okay with the public, they're going to get it. Just scan it and you can read it so much faster than I can. So if you could just finish this, you know, I find that we that we can that we can recover. For example, you've got to know what people think are the weaknesses. And you also have to know the external factors, positive and negative, because that all impacts. So with your permission, I'm just gonna have Gail put it up on the screen. Um, and what I'll do, um, uh, Andrea, Maybe I can see you. You're you and, and the mayor are the only people that I can see on the screen, except Lorianne. There's only four that I can see when I've got something on the screen. So Andrea, would you do me a favor when you're finished reading to here, and we're not adding more. Just when you're finished, then just put your hand up, and you know, literally put your hand up, and then sure. Gail will know to shift the page. Okay. That is that okay with everybody? Yeah. That, that. That'll keep us on. And I appreciate Lorianne your comment and also yours. Katrina. So I think that, that this in-between thing and the public will have this document. Okay, so ready? Go. Everybody read as quickly as you can. Okay, I'm done reading. All right, next. Okay, now let me just tell you about this before we do. These are again perceptions from both the council and the public, and from the council and uh, the executive team. And so these are internal weaknesses. Internal means you can do something about it. And sometimes people, uh, you will, we will probably see some things that are are repeated because they just got typed the way they came in. Okay. Ready, go. Okay. Am I reading too fast? I'm only too fast. I was, <laughs> that was too fast. Okay, I'll read slower. Actually, yeah. Where are you, where are you Arliss? Marilyn, Marilyn, I'm going to intervene here because I think that there are council members who want you to just keep reading. So we'll just have to have you. Sorry, but please continue with the reading. 
Let's start with the, uh, start at the weaknesses. Okay, well, let, let me ask Andrea, uh, or, or Arliss, where were you, just so we know? Well, which, I guess which, I'm a slow reader. I was No, maybe that's okay. That's okay. Which thrilled. one are you on? <laughs> which one are you on? Uh, um, I just took a deep breath at staffing. Everyone is completely overwhelmed all the time. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'll, you I'll know what? Let me, let me suggest something uh, as your facilitator. Let's have, because Arliss, that's good to know that it's that you're at a time that's a little slower. I want you to hold up your hand when it moves. But Marilyn, I think that council members, uh, let's take a poll. Uh, oh, no, let's not do this. Well, no, this no, I, is think, not, I think there are council members Katrina, who Katrina, just a minute. What I want to do is I want to make sure that everybody gets to see this. But at the same time, I know that this is going to eat in. You know what? What a wonderful problem to have that you had so many positives that it took that time. <laughs> but, but, but some people are fast like I am, and some people are slower. And so let's just have, just have you do it. I think this will work. Our, our, let's let's okay. start. I let's, tried, counsel. I tried. Yeah, okay, that's right. All right. Not on me. Start here with technology and then start reading it. And then our, let's hold up your hand when you're done and just read as quickly as you can. Okay. Alma, can you send this to the council, please? Yeah, it's going to be in your record anyway, Katrina. But you know, that's a good idea. Let's go ahead and send uh, Alma. Devices. Because the, the internal weaknesses and challenges are particularly good to have uh, when you're brainstorming goals. OK, okay uh, she put her hand up. We're moving down. Good job, Arliss. Keep it up. And thank you, uh, <laughs> Andrea, for doing it before. <laughs> See, I, I knew there was another fast person besides me. Hey, Arliss. <laughs> I'm trying to take notes while I read, too. Oh, don't so. take notes. Don't yeah, take I'm notes. I'm hoping we can, okay. we can get a copy that's, of this. That's how story. I digest. You, yeah. you are, uh, uh, Alma is going to send this weaknesses list to you because it's yeah. a good idea when you brainstorm goals to have this. This is the most important part to have for goals. Yeah, this information is extremely important, especially Absolutely. for the council. And you know what, you're, see Gail, you're gonna have the entire record. Anything that's printed on the screen, you're gonna have by the by the end of today. Yeah, but I think we, I mean, we need it now if we're gonna do this effectively. Yeah, we're almost supposedly sending it to you now. Okay, good, because we can't, I mean, we need yeah. to have this. That's okay, okay. It's, uh, don't worry, just let's keep reading. This is too much pressure. I have to keep up with our list now. <laughs> I'm tempted to just read them out loud. <laughs> then you'll know where I am. Okay, she's ready. We're gonna to go to the next part. This is still internal weaknesses or challenges. Okay, time to go to the next one, next page. This is still 
This is where weaknesses, internal weaknesses stops. And then we'll go to external. Okay, she's ready. Now, a hallmark of strategic planning is you don't just look internally, you have to look externally. So what are those external factors or trends? And they could be political, they could be social, they could be environmental, technological. What are those trends that you either know or you think there's a good chance they're gonna have a positive impact on Costa Mesa in the next three years? So this means factors outside your control but you think they'll have, could possibly will have positive factors. Okay, so we'll go to that one. Okay, we're ready to move on. Arliss, I'm no longer able to see your hand. I guess I, I'm just getting the top of your head. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yes. Thank you. Oh, okay, go ahead and move on. Okay, and this will this will be the end of the list of the external positives. Okay, now we'll go to the external threats. What could have a negative impact on the city in the next three years? And we're looking at three years because this is gonna be three-year goals. So we'll read this list. Okay, continue. This is external threats, negative.
Okay, and this will be the last page on this. And then I'm going to do, have you look at the um, agenda and I'm going to be giving you a break. Because this is about as long as people can sit comfortably. You see, Gail, it's not all the way up. It's, oh. Gail, can you move it up a little more? It's part, there we go, thank you. Actually, I think we missed a page. I think yeah. we've jumped back to the accomplishments. I think we need to go. Oh, okay, this, yeah, we're on the, we're on the last, we're, we were on page 11, so now we're on page 12, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now we're in strength or in uh, yeah, yeah I'll keep going opportunities yeah here's the external factors yeah this is where we are you've already gone through page 11 you are on page 12 now there we go right here yeah there you are Okay, now we're through with that. And I'm going to, uh, Gail, if you'll go off the screen, I'm gonna go back to the agenda. I always summarize before the breaks where we are. So what I'm gonna do is go to the agenda again and have you see where we are and where we're going. So we've done all of this down to here. And when we come back, we're going to have you develop a mission statement. So we had the beginning with public comments and uh, heard from Lori Ann, and then I went through the roles and the elements and the agenda. You got to know each other a little better, and then you have looked at the internal strengths and weaknesses and the external opportunities and threats. So when you come back, um, and let's make it, uh, I wanna make sure we're all on the same clock. It's 9.50, let's come back at 10, 10 after 10. Take a break, okay? You're doing a good job, and we are, now we are on time right now. This is where we had to be by now. So you're doing fine. Marilyn, Enjoy your break. Marilyn, Gail, yes. has, Gail has the consolidated list that has everyone's uh, input. So if Gail could send that to Alma, then we can send it out because Gail has that one compiled list. Okay, Gail, are you already able to do that? Okay, I'll work on that during the break. Okay, thank you. And you have Alma's address too, don't you? Okay, you all may mute yourselves, go do something, but be sure and be back. I will start right at 10 after 10. You're doing great. Why did we spend all that time on the, on the SWAT, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats? Because that is the basis on which you're making your decisions. Instead of in a vacuum, just what you're thinking when you come into the room or you come onto the TV, what you're getting is you're getting a broader perspective and so is the public about what's going on, what are the strengths, what are the weaknesses, what's going on externally, positively and negatively. And when it comes to putting this um, on, uh, in print on the screen on, you know, to let people know um, after, after, the, after the workshop is over, I encourage you putting on the mission and the goals and the objectives and also the strengths. Usually uh, you don't put on the weaknesses, the external opportunities, the external threats. That's available if people want to order it. But um, you put on the strengths because it is a wonderful way to let the public know, wow, I thought they weren't doing anything or gosh, I didn't realize that they did this or that or whatever. It's to increase everybody's knowledge of how much the city is doing because i mean one of the reasons why that was so long to read was that there were so many good things and so um, i want you to feel i want you to feel good about that because you should now i'm going to go up here to the screen and get the agenda and where we are now is develop a mission statement so what i want to do is show show you um the uh Excuse me. On the screen, I want to show you information about uh, developing a mission statement. We can't oh. hear you, Marilyn. Oh, you can't? Oh, sorry. Let me see here. I can hear you. Who can't I can hear? 
it, 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 it's still who else can hear you. I can't see you because this is over. Is that you, Catherine? Marilyn, we can't hear you. Okay, just a minute. You know, the rest of us can hear her. Yeah. Okay. Lauren, Lauren it, can hear you. Okay, hold up your hand if you cannot hear okay. me besides Katrina. I can hear you now. It was, my, it was on my end, my bad. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're forgiven. That, those things happen, not to worry. Now, is everybody hearing me? I should have asked that. That was a bad thing. I should have said, can you all hear me? Okay, now I'm going to go back to the screen. And I want to show you some information about a process for developing um, the mission statement. It's the, what I call the format. So a mission statement is one sentence that states why an organization exists and for whom. So I've given you a couple of examples. The one that I use probably the most uh, because it's, it's easy for people to remember is that the mission of the California Library Services Board is to encourage and enable libraries statewide to share their resources. So when you look for the why, what is the why in there? Somebody say it out loud. Which part is why? Share their resources. Yeah, to encourage and enable libraries to share their resources. Uh, so encourage and enable libraries. The sharing of resources is the why. And who is the audience for whom is, does this board exist? Libraries statewide. Libraries, libraries statewide. And the reason I use that one is because then when they did their three-year goals, one of their goals, and this was a long time ago, one of their goals was that they would develop and implement a statewide bibliographic database called Universal Borrowing. And libraries would join this and then let's say somebody came into a little library and wanted a book and they didn't have it. They could go online, find out Costa Mesa Library has it. Costa Mesa Library would loan it to them and the state would pay the libraries who shared their resources to other, uh, to other libraries. So there was a big pot of money to share it. And it really caused particularly the little libraries that just didn't have things. So that is one example. This one was a city. I didn't put the city. The city of, and I'm just showing you that there's different ways to say a mission, is committed to providing exceptional municipal services in a fiscally sound and professionally responsible manner for our community. And another one, the city of blank, in partnership with the community, sustains and enhances our safe, attractive, and quality environment in which to live, work, and play. Now, the idea of a mission statement is so that when people ask you a question, what is that organization anyway? It's not as likely to be the case in the case of, you know, a city council, but other organizations it may be. And what we want to start with is, and Gail's going to put these things in the chat. I want you to brainstorm, and I, I put your hand up and I'll call on you, because otherwise, it's, if ever all of you start talking at once, it doesn't make sense. I want you to think about the mission and I want you to think, I want you to brainstorm out loud words, not a sentence, words or phrases that you think would fit into a mission statement. So it might be an active verb, it might be the word mission, it might be whatever. So just, you're going to brainstorm that and we're just going to get about 20, 25 ideas. And then I'm going to move you toward actually developing the statement. See, we, when we're doing this face to face, that's what we do. Um, and, and we get the ideas out and then we move forward with the sentence. So somebody give me uh, one, not a, not a sentence, just a word or phrase. Uh, and, and Katrina, let's start with you. What might be a word or a phrase that you think belongs in a mission statement? Care, understanding, and helpfulness. Okay, so now Michelle, I mean, Gail will type that, care, understanding, and helpfulness. Okay, somebody else, just- uh, Thriving residents. You know, what, I, what I'll do is I'll call on you because I don't even know who said um, that. Marilyn, I need you to repeat those for me. Um, okay, Ka Catherine, could you say that again? Yeah, can we put it in the chat? I'll put it in the chat. That's what she, no, she, no she's gonna put them all. I didn't get the first word. Care, understanding, and care? help. Care, C-A-R-E. Care. C -A -R -E. care. Understanding and helpfulness, right? Okay, and she's just going to keep adding words. Thank you for offering to do that. She's going to make a whole long one that goes to everybody. Now, who who spoke next? Because I, 
Oh, uh, uh, Andrea, Andrea or is it you? Andrea, oh, said, Andrea said thriving residents. Thank you, thriving residents. Okay, and I'll just wait for, for Gail to, to get that in, in there. It might and, be faster if we just type it into the chat. Yeah, except what we're trying to do is see if, if you do it, then we're trying to get it so it'll be on one screen for everybody to see. Every time you hit return, it'll be another message and we'll get on about five people. Yeah, that's not good. Okay, so do you have that one, Gail? Yes, yes. Okay, Susan, you were next. I just wanted to add the word inclusive. Inclusive, okay. Arliss, and this is everybody, not just council. Arliss? Yeah, Arliss, uh, safe and healthy living environment. Safe and healthy living environment. Okay. And or, Gail, maybe you can give me some clue when you got it in. Oh, oh you don't see it? And, no, I don't see it. Oh, okay. Because I have to see it. Everything. It's up. Okay, Jeff? Uh, create, uh, foster, and serve community. Create, foster, and serve the community. Okay, now let's have some of the rest of you. This is for it's everybody. What's a, what's, what are some other words or phrases that might, okay, hey, Roger. Serving a community Wait, with oh. professionalism and compassion. Okay, oh, I'll I didn't get back the, to you. What's the first part of that? Serving the community with professionalism and compassion. Okay, now hold off anybody else and I'll call on you because Raj had his hand up and I want to get him next. Okay. All right, Raja. Improve quality of life. Improve quality of life. Okay. Somebody that? else. Uh, hold, uh, hold your hand up so I know. Kim? Kim? Yeah. Um, quality infrastructure. Quality infrastructure. Okay, somebody else? Go ahead, Manuel. Manuel? Yes. I have two words, equity and service. Equity and service. Okay. And then I'm going to call on Don next. You have, uh, maybe Gail, you put your hand up or something, and then I'll know you're through with writing yeah, it. Yeah, it's up. Okay, Don. Serve the needs of our community and Serve citizens. I'm sorry, what, and citizens, did you say? Serve the needs of our community. Uh, let me make it simpler. Uh, uh, serve the needs of our citizens. Serve the needs of our citizens. Okay. Anybody else? Are we? Let me know when we're getting to the point where it would go off the page. All right. Anybody else? Got a great list of words here. Okay. Um, Arliss? If I could add, this is Arliss. Um, uh, community driven or community in driven? collaboration with community. Oh, in collaboration with community, she said, like, maybe that is the second one. Anybody else? We could, we've got just enough to work with. Innovative Carol? solutions. Wait a minute, Dan. Yeah, Dan Innovative I solutions. Yeah, I know, but Carol I was it. calling on. So hold on, and oh. you know, just indicate when you want to speak. Go, go ahead and put I, Innovative Solutions. I wasn't solutions. indicating. But... And then Carol, Carol yeah. will be next. A fiscal sustainability. Okay. Well, fiscal, what was the first part? Fiscal, fiscal, fiscal. sustainability. Susan, did you have your hand up again? Okay. All right, I think that's enough to work with. Could as as alternative, besides service, it, partnership with the community. Partnership or interest of the community or in the benefit of the community. We'll put partnership with the community in there. Okay. Now what we're gonna do, Gail, is have you put it on the screen or I mean, on the chat for everybody to see. It is, it is. Oh, okay, so are, are you all seeing all those words? Okay, here's how, here's how we'd move. First, we're going to just start with, and what I'll have you do is I'll have you hold your hand up because I want I want to be able to call on you and 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 have you have an opportunity to get in if you. Some people are just more verbal than others, so I'm going to ask you for an, an initial somebody in the group hold up your hand for an initial word or words to begin the sentence. Marilyn, I have to do share screen to build this. You know what? Why don't you just write it, and when we won't have to do that, just okay. just do it on your okay. own. Then, so, what what might be an initial way to start? Remember, the key is you want it to be succinct. A number of the things that you mentioned will likely be also possible goals. So it's not what you do; it's why you're doing what you're doing. So, how do you want, how would you want to start the sentence? Because you can start it 
with, and you always put the whole name of the city, the city of Costa Mesa. So you can put that, you know, uh, and then go from there, or you can say the mission is, or you can say the city of Costa Mesa, blah, 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 whatever. So somebody hold up your hand, we'll just start. And this, you would, it, this, it always takes the longest time of the, of the retreat, because it takes people a while to come together in one sentence. And uh, I don't see Kim or the mayor uh, or Dan. Am, have I lost those people? I see you. You're looking okay. good. All right. Um, mayor, I'm here. <laughs> Katrina, are you there? I see you. Uh, OK, I, I, can I see you visually, Katrina? There we go. And Dan, I don't see you either. OK. Somebody give me the beginning of the sentence. And oh, then I'll see if there's consensus. A whole, a whole sentence. Yeah, well, don't, let's not do a whole sentence. Let's just do the first part. Do just the first words. Okay. And, let's see if, and then I'll see if there's consensus. We're not voting on this. OK. And uh, uh, Arliss is wanting to start. OK. So what, what is the uh, well, uh In partnership with our community. Yeah. Well, and it, you wanted that at the beginning. That's the beginning of the I'm going to throw a whole sentence out there and you can take a piece, <laughs> the piece yeah. that you want. I was going to throw out, uh, in partnership with our community, we create a safe and healthy environment where all residents can thrive. Well, if everybody agreed with that, we can move right on. <laughs> Maybe not just residents, but also the community because resident, you know, people come into the... Well, do you want to just look at her sentence? You can do that if you want to. Well, we don't. I'm sorry. Can I say something? Sure. I, I, uh, I, I think we do partner with the community, but our role is to serve the community. Our role is, uh, is not, a, we're not a partnership. We, we may partner, and that's a good word, and I like it, but, but we serve, we exist. The role of city government is to serve the needs and desires of the citizens. I think okay, that's so in that, that case, designed. I don't think we can make up a different. Okay, it, so let's look, at, let's look at different ways to say this. So it could be the city of Costa Mesa serves the community is, is what you're suggesting, Dan. Don, yeah, the, role, right? the role of Costa Mesa is serving the needs. And, and you wouldn't need to say the role because okay. what you're wanting to say, when you say it, that, that'll tell you what the role is. How okay. about, is it possible for us to have something that we can see because we don't know how to revise it if we can't see it? Yeah, you know, that's the problem. You know what, let's try, let's try, the, ch let's try the chat. Um, but I, let me get some consensus on the initial words and then I'll have Gail put it in the chat. Because you see, otherwise, unfortunately, this is, where, this is where Zoom really fails because it means that if it's on the screen, I don't see but four people and one of them is myself. So I, I can't call on you. We can so, see. Yeah. Okay. So all right. Um, Manuel, do you want to? What did you you want to? I just want to echo Don's sentiment because I had the well, same exact thought that it serves should be one of the primary focuses we do. Okay. The city. Let's see if we get consensus on that word. You like serve? And now it doesn't mean it's your favorite word, but it means you can support it. Yes. That's what consensus. Okay. Then let's reserve. Let's reserve serve. We got we got a word there. Okay, now do you do you want to do you want to start? For example, the city of Costa Mesa serves. Does that work? As a, as that, we will I, have, I love that. We'll have several no, I, drafts that you know. Just just know. I mean, this can take up to an hour and a half. It better not because we've got too much to do. But so what if we no, have the city yeah. uh, the city of Costa of Costa Mesa serves? And then, then what I would, would you put. Yeah, I would put by, like by, okay. and you know we have we had more, but I would want to ask fiscal responsibility or fiscal. Okay, let me just tell soundness. you, you avoid the words by, and you avoid the words through, and here's why: you say the mission is blah 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 by doing this this and this, that which follows the word by or through are goals. They're what you do to fulfill the mission. Am I making sense? Yeah. So okay. the mission is and to the, serve residents and businesses. Does that make sense? Is that who you're serving, residents and businesses? Okay, Susan, comment? Uh, residents, businesses, and visitors. 
How about visitors? You want visitors so oftentimes when you when you see the live, work, and play, uh -huh. it's trying to represent the residents, the the businesses, and the people that come to your city. Um, and so I just want to make a comment based on kind of where the sentence is going right now. Is as I was looking at Costa Mesa strives to represent the needs of our community by okay. serving. See, uh, one other thing, I, I would, I'd, I'd ask you to, to kind of wait a little bit. Yeah. You have to look at words like strives because that means not that we do it, we strive to do it. Right. So some, some people do not use citizen because citizen is a hot word. And it's mm -hmm. not that I, you know, it's, so you have to, you, you really don't, there's an yeah. old adage that I love and I don't know who, I, I should look it up and find out who said it. It's go slow to go fast. The temptation is want to go fast to get through it. And the fact of the matter is we'll go slow and then we'll be able to, go, you'll be able to go faster then on your goals and objectives. You know, Lorianne, I realized I forgot to call on you. You were wanted, you wanted to say something earlier. Can you even remember what it was? <laughs> I think, no, I can't. Okay. No. All right. So right now, look at the chat. I was offering to start with the city of Costa Mesa. I figure we could have. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Does that, does everybody okay with that? That's good. Yeah. Strong, city of Costa work. Mesa. Great. <laughs> now, do you, do you like the idea? Serves. Yeah. Can I can I sure. propose the city of Costa Mesa exists to serve? Sure. And go from Some there. Some say exists. And then you agree. The, you like that? Exists. That's why we are here. It's what exists is. Now, I'm trying not to get into your content. That was too evaluative. Uh, anyhow, the city of Costa Mesa exists to serve, and you said. And then I was going to say the short version is citizens, and that's that's the shortest version. And then I think what could come in between citizens, which I think everybody should give input on, is 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 the desires, the needs. The I think there's adjectives that might describe what that what that city okay. might be. Let, let's that let's sense. stay for now with serves and we've got the issue of community versus citizens can i yep, can go i ahead, Kim. Say yes? Kim. um how about residents residents okay residents uh, businesses and right. visitors this is brian glass how's that the city, the city of coast mesa exists to serve the residents businesses and visitors of the community through and then equity, fairness, and something like that. And but not through. I'll, 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 I'll help you with that part. The guy from Hydesville has my vote. <laughs> you know, I understand having been on this state board, it's so easy to get into, we got to vote on this. We got to vote on that. And, and that consensus is, it, we'll do a straw poll on goals. That's as close as I get to having me vote. Okay, let's look at what Gail has written down. Gail, the last statement, the city of Costa Mesa serves residences, residents, residents, exists, the city of Costa Mesa exists to serve, yeah, exists, to, exists serve. to serve the residents, businesses, and the, visitors of the community and visitors through the community. And equity, fairness, and then you stay and away from through, through, because through, through then says what your goals are. Okay, so let, we, we can still get that in there, you just get it in a little differently. The reason why it's got to be short and the reason why it's got to be real strong is that I will have people call me because all of my business has always been referral. I've never advertised. I don't have a website. I'm not going to ever have a website. And it's all referral. And, and the, key, the key is that people will call and say, we understand you facilitate strategic planning. And I'll say, first question, have you done strategic planning? Oh, yes. Okay. Do you have a mission statement? Oh, yeah. Uh, what is it? Oh, just a minute! I got to go look it up. And I think no, you're no, you're not doing strategic planning. You're not. So that's why we're trying to do this. Okay, let's look at the chat for a minute. And what we have: the city of Costa Mesa, and it'll be all written out, exists to serve the residents, businesses, and visitors of the community. Or does resident? And I'll, I, my business is to ask you questions. It's not that I'm evaluating. If you say residents, businesses, and visitors, do you think that that's clear that it's to the community without having to say it? It's, and that's what I think so. Yeah, okay, because what we're trying to do is shorten that which you don't need to have right. if it's implied. Okay, so then if we stop with the city of Costa Mesa exists to serve the residents, businesses, and visitors with what? 
It's it's well, residents, businesses and visitors. I'm sorry. It's maybe instead because. Oh, okay, okay. The city of Costa Mesa exists to serve its residents, businesses, and visitors, and that would take care of community. See, you you're, you're doing great. Okay. So now, Marilyn, what other who's, who, who's talking? <laughs> Did you just hold up That's your hand? That's Jeff. Jeff. Hi. Where are you, Jeff? <laughs> I don't know where I am on your screen. <laughs> there you are, Jeff. Go ahead. Yeah, disem disembodied. So I, I, I appreciate economy. Um, and I think we need to have a, a succinct message here. So to me, exists is self-evident. Um, you know, I don't I don't see the value of, of that word in particular. And I agree, serve is a is a good broad word, but I, I believe we do more than just serve our community. I think it, that's but we aren't suggested. true with the sentence either, remember. Right, right. No, but I'm suggesting you know, serve is a good broad umbrella, um, but I, I, I prefer to be more active, or at least I think of our role as being much more active. So what would make it more active? Well, like I said, so fo Foster, for example, is suggesting that we're actually moving in a certain direction. We're trying to, to do something with what we have. Um, and to me, you know, we're, we're really trying to build and uh, create a thriving community. Okay, what I would, what I'd like to suggest just is that we hold on to that for a minute, and because we'll have multiple sentences. Sure. Let's let's hold on to this and see what comes next, and then we can see how we can fold things together. And remember, group, this is a this is something that all of you embody. So I want you to feel free to to say something. You know, it's it doesn't have to just be the council making comments. And I'm delighted that's true, but I also want the rest of you to feel free to. So let's look at the chat for a minute and let's see. Uh, the city of Costa Mesa exists to serve its residents, businesses, and visitors. Now, let's just leave that for now and see what other key words that you, wanna, that you want to mention. So what comes to mind? In what areas are you going to serve? What is, it, what is it that you want to be sure of that's in there? Uh, health and safety are two issues. Okay. This is Arliss. Okay, yeah, Arliss, health and safety. Okay, now, do you, as a city, provide health? No, so healthy, provide... healthy living environment is okay, the right. kind of the context that I mean to okay. raise that in. All right, and safety. Is safety an important issue? Does that need yeah. to be in your statement? Okay, separating your head for a minute, the word it's and community, and see what you wanna describe as your community. So safe community, what else do you wanna say about your community? It's safe, what else? Go ahead, Susan. I think um, maybe it was Jeff that said thriving. And okay. when, when you're talking about health and safety and all those other things and economics, Thriving can encompass a lot of those. Okay. I'm, I'm seeing a number of people nod their heads. That's good. Give me very, because I'm watching you. And by the way, if you're doing anything, uh, uh, emails or anything, I can see because your head drops. And I'm seeing just the top of your head. Okay. So, so now we've got two words here. Let's look at the chat again. So what we've got here is we've got health and safety, healthy living environment, safe, thriving, Okay, so let's look here. The city of Costa Mesa exists to serve its residents, visitor, to serve its residents, visitors, businesses, and visitors to its safe, thriving. Any other words beside that? Inclusive. Inclusive. Yeah, oftentimes a pattern of three is a pretty good. Um, when you, when you do statements and you have three things, it seems to flow better if you can pull out what you want. So inclusivity, is, that, is inclusivity important towards? Yeah, getting a lot of head yeah. nodding on that. How about yeah. safe? Everybody doing okay? And give me some feedback, I'm watching you. Okay, thriving. You like thriving? Okay. Yeah. So vibrant. How, vibrant or vibrant's another one. Vibrant. What do you think about vibrant? 
When you when you hear the word vibrant, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Happy. Joy and energy. Happy. Energy, Dynamic. joy. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Unique and eclectic. Uh-huh. Look at how many words that re- that that takes care of. So mm. a vibrant community, like, wow, I just saw their mission statement. And I'm thinking about moving to Southern California, and if it's a vibrant community, I want to go there. Remember, your mission can, and your mission goals and objectives can help people decide to come. Okay, let's look, Gail. If you put those together, let's see if we've got that. Uh, I put it on share screen. How would you like me to put it together? Uh, okay, you got it on chat. Okay, let's let's put it together for just a minute. Let them see it. Try and uh, bring it uh, up. Uh, as though it was in the record itself as the new mission statement. Can you do that? I'm retyping it. Okay. And and we'll have the words, um, those three words in there. Vibrant, safe. Oops, I lost the other one. Inclusive. Inclusive. (laughs) Inclusive. That's that's because I wasn't looking at the words. Okay, we'll just see how this looks and you can just rework it. But what you wanna do is then when you develop your goals, you're needing to pay attention to that mission statement. So it's consistent. Okay, the city, okay, you put it in chat again, I guess. All right, just a minute. The city of Costa Mesa exists to serve its residents, business and visitors, or, or and maybe you not say it's here in, in its, a vibrant, safe, and inclusive community. Okay, yeah. Lorianne. Can, uh, oh, can I lobby that? I think I think Jeff had a good suggestion to eliminate the word "exists" because it doesn't. It is okay, a- is that okay with everybody? Take out "exists." Just go right to "serves." Yeah. Okay. Take and out I, that. Would, I would. Can I say something? Yeah. Um, go ahead. I would suggest my volumes up. Like, I don't think we need to say the city of Costa Mesa because I think that's evident. Um, If we just say our mission is to serve the residents, businesses, and visitors, I don't know what the rest of the sentence is. You know, the reason why that is, Katrina, and I made a mistake by not sharing that, is that, that, that oftentimes it's used and people say, who is that? What's it talking about? So one of the rules of setting a mission statement is that it, ha- it's, it always includes its legal name so that it's absolutely clear who it is. So when I, you saw the examples I said the city of in both yeah, cases. Yeah, I did my own research on some examples, but yeah, that's fair. I'm just giving yeah. my input. No, that's a, no, and I'm glad for your input because it brought out what I failed to say to all of you is that somewhere in there you want it. I mean, if I'm working with a nonprofit, for example, it's got to say in there what the name of the nonprofit is, but it's also true of cities because you want to embrace that and have people know that it's yours. Hey, Lorian, you had your hand up. I agree with it. Jeff and Dawn that we don't need the word exists. Okay. Lorian, and I don't think we need it's either. Uh, yeah, it sounds like it's. Is a, and this is what we do is we just rework it. And you know what? You're getting really close to having it together. So the city of Costa Mesa serves residents business and visitors in its so inclusive, I, safe. Okay, go ahead, Lorianne. So if we want to uh, eliminate the exists and the, and the its, how about the city of Costa Mesa provides a safe, inclusive, and vibrant something for its residents, businesses, and visitors? That's another way to turn it around, yeah. Have you written that down? Environment maybe provides a safe, inclusive, and vibrant environment. Uh, uh, yeah, okay, okay. Manuel. Pardon me. You wrote that exact thing, Lorian. Oh well, then we're getting closer, Manuel. Like was ten next minutes ago. Then... Alignment. Oh, oh no, yeah, you're just, coming together. Was... Go ahead, Manuel. You're next I was just visualizing email. the flip of the, of the sentence that um, Lorian and Andrea were describing. So I think it's great. Okay, and Don, you wanted to say something because I'm I, have- I still think you missed the word serve, which I think you know we provide it, but if if the if the citizens and the okay. community doesn't want it, I still yeah, we'll look at that, that and see if we can. Okay, let's see. 
Um, look at what's in the chat. Are you all turning on the chat so far? And we'll see if we put service in here. The city of Co oh, it's gone, Gail. Uh, let's see. The bottom. Uh, yeah, I don't know why. It, I, I still, just I, okay. I, I think I mean, when you say role, and I go back to the role of city government, it's really a basic, really basic and simple. And you can add words to embellish what we do, but it's a basic, it's a serve our community, serve our residents. I think Brian was right in saying, serve our visitors, our businesses, that you can expand that. Well, you can, you can put, uh, you can say preserve, you can say serves our safe, inclusive and vibrant environment. It, it just as well, let's, let's just yeah. take it one at a time. Yeah. Right, right now, what was suggested is that the city of Costa Mesa provides a safe, inclusive and vibrant environment for residents businesses and visitors. But that's what they might do, not their role. That's how what about, they might do. Isn't how about it? adding the city of Costa Mesa serves to provide? You want serves to provide? Yeah, I, I agree with that. Don, there you go. Uh, serves. I don't like the word I don't like the word provide. I think okay. a more active. Okay, then maybe you want to serves our safe, inclusive and vibrant environment for residents, businesses, and visitors. You Try don't, it. You don't serve. Don, Don, wait a minute. Don, I've got to get time to get feedback from others too. Just All right. Right. Okay, Gail, can you can you put that what in there? What is your verb, Marilyn? Instead of, uh, serves, I think it was serves and said, serves our safe, inclusive, and vibrant environment for residents, businesses, and visitors. How's that sounding so far? And then, I'll, then Dan, Dan, that was a good way to put it in. It's easier because it, part of you are covered up. I can't even see part of you with it when this is on the screen. Okay, the city of, all right, so let's take it in pieces and see if I can get consensus. And um, I, I, maybe I'll make this smaller. I can, no, that didn't work. So it needs to go the other. We're serving residents, businesses, and visitors. So the city of Costa Mesa serves residents, businesses, and visitors by providing a safe, inclusive. Yeah. You, if you say if you say by, then that says by says what the goals are, and it limits it to that's the only way you're going to serve. If you say you serve our safe, inclusive, and vibrant environment, it, it's different than than putting it on the end, which is more of a goal. Yeah, it, it's just, okay, now I've got you on the side. This helps. Okay, so let's just take it in pieces. Can you all even, remember consensus is general agreement or support. It's maybe not your favorite words or word, but you can support it. And what, by support it, I mean, you walk out of the, uh, of the workshop and you're behind it. You're not saying to people, oh yeah, I really didn't like it, but I felt like I was forced to go along with it. So what we want to do in consensus in fact, there's a book and some of you may have read called Getting to Yes, which is what I use when I'm, when I'm working with a group that's uh, in conflict. And Getting to Yes says that the way you get to yes is you focus on the issues and concerns that you have in common rather than the positions that drive you apart. And that's what I, I have used. I don't see it as being in conflict, though. I think we're all in agreement. It's just it's trying to get the words. Well, no, no, I know you're doing great. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm, what I'm telling you is, I'm going to take this word just in pieces first, and see if you can buy into it. So I, I'm. I think you're doing great. And I don't say that to everybody. Lori Ann will tell you. And okay. maybe Manuel so, is. You might not be able to see him, but he has his hand up. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you have? I ahead, do man. have a comment, but I know Jennifer hasn't spoken yet, and she's also in the queue, so I'll, I'll go out to her. Thank you for doing that. You picked that up, and I missed her. Jennifer, and then Manuel. Uh, I think um, sir, the word serve seems to go with residents, businesses, and visitors, but when we're talking about a vibrant, safe, and inclusive environment, I'm, I'm thinking a more active word, like maybe create. Create's not the right word necessarily, but create a vibrant, safe, and inclusive environment to serve our residents, businesses, and visitors. And that's kind of, down, Don, that's kind of along what you were saying about innovation, because creation and innovation 
are oftentimes aligned. Okay, let's take it in pieces and see what we do with that, but I want to go back to Manuel first. Sure, I'm glad I let Jennifer go first because I have the exact same thought she did. Um, oh, well. I actually was going to suggest that maybe we should preserve um, in, the, in the second half of the uh, sentence. Okay. All right. So let's let's just look at what we've got so far. Can, can you can you all buy into that? You start with the city of Costa Mesa. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to hold up your hand. You don't have to vote. <laughs> I just want to make sure. Little victory. We, there. we have started the sentence. Okay. Just put a period. In, in. Yeah. That's it. We're we'll, we'll just quit here. We'll go right to goal. Okay. Now, I, I, there's, I've gotten a lot of, of support for the word serves when I've looked at you because I'm watching you non-verbally. So do, do you think serves belongs in here? Yes. Okay. So do you want to go to, to whom you serve? In other words, serves are residents, businesses, and visitors. Or are you, oh, all of a sudden now I'm getting a bunch of head nodding. Try this. Okay. The city of Costa Mesa serves our business, our residents, businesses, and visitors in our safe, inclusive, and vibrant environment. It's Marilyn, the, the issue I have with saying in our safe, inclusive, not everybody believes that. And that's usually like a goal or something that you're trying to it, establish. No, but you see, but see, your mission statement dictates your goals. So You're if you want already. that, it says it's safe already. To me, when I read it, it says that we're safe and we're inclusive already. When we know that people don't think that, so then that's you why can I only say, Then you can say instead of our, you can say in a safe, inclusive, and vibrant environment, and it doesn't say you've already got it. So it also, doesn't throw it out. People do think that we're safe and inclusive. Yeah, I mean, it's here from the people who don't. <laughs> Okay. Well, it's, let's, also, it's also what is the mission? Not necessarily are you there yet. But yes, right. The mission. A lot of people are not. I mean, a lot of people aren't fulfilling their mission yet. That mission is what gives you direction. The mission and the vision. So you, you're not you're not in a problem. Okay, Gail. Um. We're, let's see. Let's let's type. Yeah. Let's just have a type. Okay, go ahead, Laura Ann. No, I, I know we like the word, is the word creates, okay? Like if we said the city of Costa Mesa creates a safe, inclusive and vibrant environment for re the residents, businesses and visitors, it serves. How's that? We've got service, we've got the serves. And you got the, and then yeah, we have, I, still think it's, I still think it's backwards. Okay. <laughs> okay, you know what, but now every everybody's not gonna have the favorite favorite thing. So you get, yeah. when, you're do, when you're doing consensus, you look at what are what are other possibilities, and it might not be my favorite mm -hmm. order. But Gail, I need you to type the next. Let's let's go ahead and type what um, Lorianne just said. Okay, hey, Lorianne, the city of Costa Mesa creates a safe, inclusive, and vibrant. What was that word? Environment. Environment. It was uh, environment for the residents, businesses, and visitors. It serves. But I don't think that it's quite there yet. It but. might be we serves instead of it serves. Whoops. I agree with Dawn that service needs to be at the front of the of the mission, not at the end. How about the city of Costa Mesa serves to foster a safe? Okay, we Guys, still have the city uh, of Costa Mesa. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so be happy. Okay. If we go with serves first. Serves to foster. We have, do you want serves to foster? I'm not getting I'm not getting consensus on the foster. Okay. Can so I make a comment? Uh, who said that? Arliss. Uh, Arliss. Uh, Sorry, okay. I'm not sure that um yeah, I do I, not necessarily serves to foster, but I, I have been a little bit hung up on the creates word. And, and I think I prefer foster, which um, I think uh, Jeff brought up earlier. Um, just for me, uh, if we say we create, it feels actually a little bit exclusive versus fostering, which is, you know, means we might do work. We might partner with other organizations to do work. It's it, it, to me, foster is a little bit more uh, inclusive in the, the types of things we would do. Okay, Susan, you had your we're hand not up. we're not just creating an environment. We're trying to create an environment where everyone can participate and enjoy 
play. Okay. So I, is, that's why I prefer foster to create. So the word promote, just, okay. um, Arliss, I was thinking about fostering or promoting. We promote an environment that is. Yeah. I'm seeing more head nodding or, on, on promote. Yeah. And I, I'd like to go back to um, Chief Stefano's comment of innovation because, you know, one of the things I love about Costa Mesa is the, the artistic, creative, innovative components that, you know, I, don't, I would hope we don't lose in our mission statement. I was putting that in vibrant. Yeah, yeah, I think it does. Yeah. I think that, I think that covers uh, uh, Okay, all right, Gail, let's just start over and just start the city of Costa Mesa with nothing after it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to wind this up and move you on. Because you're, you're there, you're just kind of moving things around, which is exactly what you need to do. Okay, so we should have the city of Costa Mesa. Now, our, our, now just remember, consensus means it may not be your favorite idea, but you can support it. Do you want to have up front the word serves? Is that important to say serves? Yes. Okay, do you want to say yeah, that it serves? Because she can't see you all. That's the problem. I can see you all, but she can't. Oh, yes. Yeah, I now can. I got it shifted. <laughs> Thank you, Katrina. That's very helpful because I hadn't been seeing him. So the city of Costa Mesa. Yeah, and so is serves. Is that, is that the best way to begin? Serves, serves to promote. Well, that, that to, to promote didn't get support. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I can tell. I, when okay, so the can we city connect of Coast the two pieces? Can we connect the two pieces with an and? So we serve residents, sure. businesses, and visitors, and promote a safe, inclusive. You can do that. Vibrant environment. Yeah, I'm getting. Oh, I got some hands up and some clapping. Yeah. Hey. Way to go, Arliss. <laughs> Very Arliss. See, <laughs> We're good. You're getting paid back because you, you nicely read the record and put your hand up. <laughs> okay. All right. So we'll go back to that. So Arliss, dictate it for Gail, please. Okay. Uh, the city of Costa Mesa and say it slowly. serves its residents. Wait, wait, slow down. Oh, I, have it. I have it so far. Go on. Okay. Re I the have city the... of Costa Mesa serves <laughs> its residents, businesses, and visitors and promotes a safe, inclusive, and vibrant environment. community or environment. Okay. Okay. Period. Environment. Community. Okay. Period. Period. Uh, on as can I um, sure. Some input? Go ahead, Katrina. The three words that I think are important that I don't hear in that are um, healthy, uh, prosperous. Um, I, I think that healthy and prosperous um, need to be in there. Okay, let's see what the group says. Promotes a safe, inclusive, healthy, prosperous, and vibrant environment. What do you think? Are we saying environment or community? Uh, it's up to you. I you want to say community good. group instead of environment? I like community. Yeah, community. Yeah. I'm, see, I, I appreciate it when you give me nonverbal feedback because you can't all talk at once. Okay, so we have the city of Costa Mesa serves residents, businesses, and visitors and promotes a safe, inclusive, and vibrant community. So what about those other words? It, it, I would say a healthy safe. Okay, yeah, okay, healthy. Now, that, uh, here's where I ask you again. What do you do in the area of health? We do Are a you lot. considered a health shelter. We provide a healthy place for people to live. We have after school programming where we provide healthy activities for people to participate in. We promote youth sports. Um, we have, uh, we've been at the forefront of promoting a healthy community with the COVID. Can, can, can that be included in this we have non vibrant community? We have non-toxic um, policies and practices with regard to pesticides. We're moving towards sustainability. I mean, I don't know, I think health You know what it may be, Katrina, it may be is a major goal instead of an objective. Whatever you want, Marilyn. That's <laughs> <laughs> no, not my, my list. Okay, Apparently. I think we've got serves residents, businesses, and, and visitors and promotes a safe, inclusive, and vibrant community. Now, it's been brought up about health. You Tell me the other two words, Kat, Kat, Katrina. What was it besides health? I'm good with whatever the group wants. Oh, okay. Well, if you're all right with this group, because I want you to be good. Prosperous. Well, is right. 
See, vibrant and prosperous, are they the same or different? They are different to me. Is safe, can't we say safe, healthy, inclusive and vibrant community? If you're vibrant, I think you're prosperous. But I like to like me, by in this context, in our city's context, I think that might be true in some other context, but to me, vibrant uh, is like, we're the city of the arts. We have murals everywhere. We've got performing arts. I think the vibrant to me means energetic, colorful, pretty, you know. Okay, let me just ask the group, because this is a group decision. Do you want to add prosperous, promote, promotes a safe, inclusive, vibrant, and prosperous community? Don. Yeah, I, I like both words Katrina brought up, but I, I think we should keep it to three words. And, and and Katrina, for me, vibrant kind of includes some of those things you're just, and includes prosperous too, so. I'm getting a lot of head nodding, John, keep yeah. giving it the three words. But if I could, I could, I could trade vibrant for healthy or vibrant for prosperous, I don't, okay. I'm okay with it. But I think we should keep it shorter. Otherwise it's, it loses some meaning. It seems like there's the, the support seems to be for this sentence. There, I mean, there's not, I'm not hearing taking any of this out. I'm just hearing maybe things need to be added. And yet uh, I, when you said that, people started to nod about it needs to be short. So I think you've got it. And let me check it yeah, out. Yeah, if this is Arliss. Um, for me, I think I, I really like both words. I do think they can fit in the three that we have. And I, as part of that, I think it's important for us to recognize safe as like not just based on crime statistics, for example, right? right? Like safe means like clean air for us to breathe and an environment where people yeah. can be, you know, active and healthy. So, um, you know, if we think of each of these three words that we have as sort of umbrellas <laughs> for, okay. you know, that have pretty broad meanings, I'm, I'm good with it. Okay, I'm going to read it now. And this is it, because, you know, the public doesn't get to see all this. They're probably so bored right now. <laughs> the city of Costa Mesa serves residents, businesses, and visitors, and promotes a safe, inclusive, and vibrant community. All right? Let me know. Okay, yeah. thumbs up. Can I, yeah. Sorry, can I just make a, a pitch? Okay, one last Is there anyone pitch. else? <laughs> yeah, just that we took out it. Um, and I do think that changes the meaning, um, you know, serving its residents or our residents and businesses. Um, oh, I see. Because we don't serve, we don't, we don't serve other Others cities, residents. businesses, right? So or residents. It, it's um, group, so I do think it's important to put that. Do you want the its or do you want our? Which, 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 if you're reading it and you're, you're a community member, you're not one of this group here, which is a better word, its community or our community? Our our community. Okay, the city our of Costa Mesa serves yeah. our residents, business, and visitors. And thank you. I okay. think that suggests. I'm trying, to, the, I'm trying the, now to bring this to a close. But Susan, go ahead. Yeah. Dare I bring up one final point? Um, the word <laughs> and, the word and is in there quite a bit, and so I'm wondering if we could say the city of Costa Mesa serves our residents, businesses, and visitors while promoting a safe, inclusive, vibrant community. That that okay? Nice. Yeah, nice. you, you got it. You get Why is okay, but bye isn't? All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, group. Gail. What about to promote a safe? It, no, you know what? You're done. I think you've done it. I think you've got a great mission statement. I'm not supposed to say that. But the city of Costa Mesa serves our residents, business, and visitors while promoting a safe, inclusive, and vibrant community. So I want you to applaud yourselves. Come on. Hands. Good job. Now we get to go to the hard work of the goals. But I don't think you're going to have trouble with goals. So I'm taking this away, and Gail is putting this in the, the, the doc. Oh, cripe. <laughs> I hit the thing that said, I hit the thing that was asking for, instead of getting rid of chat, it was asking for uh, getting rid of the meeting. That would be really bad. All right. Now, let me go, take you to the agenda. And I'm going to show you where we are. If I can find it. They keep moving this. I, I have a few uh, ideas for. There we go. I don't know why they have to move you and move the agenda. Okay. So see how much that you've done? You're all the way down here now to a mission statement. But before we do goals, 
we need Carol to give a finance report. And it, 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 there'll be some question and answer period, but we're, we've, got it, we've got to be sure that, I mean, ordinarily, with most groups, I go right to goals, but I know with Lori Ann and in Huntington Beach, and she did always a beautiful job, it convinced me that that has real value, especially when there are new council members. So Carolina, uh, Carol, uh, Carol, maybe, Carol will give a finance report right now and, and brief questions, and I'm going to stop sharing this agenda. So Carol, it's all yours. Thank you, Marilyn. Just give me a quick minute to go ahead and share my screen. Okay, go ahead. And so let her do all the presentation before any questions, please. Marilyn, can I uh, just <clears throat> make some brief remarks about- Oh, sure. About the value of, of the financial piece. So, you know, at our last meeting, uh, of the city council, we gave an update on last year's audited financials. Uh, so you won't be hearing that again. Today, what we wanted to share with you is where we are today. And then what we are thinking is the case financially for our city next year, very preliminarily. Um, I think the value of having this conversation when we're talking about goal setting and strategic planning is knowing the full context of the financial picture so that when we set our goals and our objectives, we have that framework in mind and we have the latest and greatest information about the resources that are available, the resource constraints, the opportunities that we might have with funding at the federal or state levels, or in some years it's been the threats of their instability and how that could affect us as a city so that we're planning for those things when we're looking at the next six months or the next year. And so I know it's a rough transition to go from the mission <laughs> statement development to talking about finances, but it's important for us to have that framework as well. And the, you know, all of the intel that we have at this moment, which will change, I guarantee you these numbers will change, but it's the best and the latest and greatest that we have regarding our financial stability and then what's happening at the other levels of government that could impact us as well. So hopefully we'll find this useful as we go into the goals and objectives portion um, you know, later on in the day. Thank you. Thank you. Lorianne. Okay, Carol, it's all yours. Thank you, Marilyn. Thank you, uh, Lorianne. I wanted to go ahead and um, start the presentation by providing you what we're going to be discussing in the next few minutes um, as it relates to the city's finances. So this is a really unique time of year for the Department of Finance, where we're really dealing with three fiscal years essentially at the same time. We're closing out the 1920s, so we already provided the council at the last council meeting the results and so a very brief overview of those results. We're also tracking 2021. We're being vigilant about making sure we have the ability to be proactive as it comes to our numbers, how the revenues and the expenses are, where we're at today, six months into the fiscal year and as well into a full pandemic mode. And where we're at as we start creating 21-22. So over the last few weeks, Department staff have been working diligently in all three fiscal years, essentially at the same time. We also have the Governor Newsom's proposed state budget, which as you know, he came out with his fiscal year 21-22 budget in January. We'll go through some of the highlights that he's proposing there, as well as um, President Biden's economic relief proposal and some challenges and opportunities that the city is, is seeing as we go into um, this next Phase. So into the 1920 year end audited numbers, um, I wanted to do a little recap of what we were dealing with at this time. So as you know, July 1 and through June 30th, 2020 essentially marks the 1920 fiscal year period. March 19th, essentially three quarters into the fiscal year, COVID hit. Governor Newsom's stay at home orders were implemented and businesses were essentially closed down. And um, immediately right then and there, the city came to the city council on April 21st to implement a cost containment plan to get ahead of the last quarter fiscal impacts that we were already starting to assume would be hitting in that last quarter. So stay ahead of the 1920. On December 6th, the governor Newsom provided his second stay at home order, essentially again, 
closing down certain businesses. And on December 31st is when the city completed its financial audits of 1920. A lot going on in the last 12 months. In 1920, we ended the year with a positive balance of 167,000. That's essentially 99.8% of the adopted budget. You can't get more balanced than this. We came in essentially at balanced in 1920, knowing that in that last quarter of the fiscal year, we were already experiencing the financial impacts of the COVID. And essentially in that last quarter, we had to re stuff all of our 2021 proposed budget and come back with brand new budgets knowing now we were gonna be fully into the pandemic mode and it's continuing to experience the revenue hits across the city, not only in the sales tax, but recreational and all kinds of um, areas fiscally, we were starting to address this. So essentially about three or four weeks, we came up with a plan. We, we came up with the adopted budget, not increasing a headcount. We were able to um, provide staff furloughs, 5% across the board where every bargaining group in the city provided a 5% reduction in their either salaries or benefits. We defunded 14 full-time positions across the board among all departments. We reduced the general fund by $10.8 million. In this exercise, departments uh, were provided targets of 5, 10, and 15%. We were able to get to $10.8 million, but that exercise allowed for the city to have trigger points throughout the fiscal year if the revenues will continue to decline further than we were seeing at that moment in time. However, we were still able to continue to fund CalPERS increases of 2.8. We had to fund an election cost. We did waive the CAD ordinance um, for the year. However, we essentially maintained funding so we can, uh, we, we can fulfill the requirements of the state and county maintenance of efforts for our city's infrastructure. With the adopted budget, we also recommended uh, utilizing up to $10.2 million of reserves and deferrals of capital projects to in, in order to maintain essential services as we continue through this pandemic. For our 2021 expenditures, we adopted the total budget of about $136.6 million. Of that, it's 132 and a half for operating and salary and benefits. And we also ensured some transferring out for our capital projects, as well as our IT replacement fund. As you may recall, early in 2020, we adopted to change the six and a half percent towards the CAN to 5% for the CAN for the capital projects and 1.5% for IT to help the city maintain a funding source for our technology. And we fully funded the IT replacement. Where we're at today, please keep in mind for what we're projecting for 2021. These are estimates, they're projections only. We're six months into the fiscal year, a lot can happen. Um, but we're projecting about 136.6 million, essentially at budget. Um, we are seeing some reductions in salaries and benefits and operatings. However, we are um, have increased some transfers out. As you may recall, in December, we did a small business grant of about $2 million. We are hopeful that we'll be able to recover some of that or all of that money. Um, but at that moment in December, council did authorize the use of reserves. We also have a deficit essentially in the disaster fund of about two and a half million dollars. And I'll go through those numbers shortly. So for a 2021 20, overview, as far as our revenues are concerned, we're seeing an uptake in our property taxes. We've already received our first half of the year's installments and they're coming in slightly higher. So we're fairly safe at this point to assume we're gonna to continue to see those higher installments into through June 30th. Our sales tax is essentially flat. Um, you recently received a newsletter explaining some of the areas that we were already anticipating to have um, some reductions in our different types of areas of our sales tax. So at this point we are um, coming in at budget. 
our TOT, which is essentially our hotel tax, continues to uh, decline. And some of our other revenues at this point are coming in at budget. There's a lot of influctuations within our revenue streams of about 127.7 million for our revenues. Um, we do have an approved use of reserves of 6.2 million. And um, at this point, a potentially use of deferral of our capital projects of 2.2 for an essentially flat budget of $136.1 million against our expenditures of 106.1. Again, I can't stress this enough. That these are all projections at this point. We're still receiving revenues as we speak, and we're going to continue to monitor the situation as we go through 2021. So essentially for are these estimated balances that I just went through, we're maintaining the approved use of reserves, um, 4.2 that was approved and the additional $2 million um, for the small business bridge grant. Essentially potentially freeing up, up to $2 million for our capital project deferrals. And um, we're also at this point achieved sufficient vacancy savings to be able to fund the 14 defunded positions. For our 21-22 budget development, uh, we're, we're early in this process as we start to go through 21-22, uh, but at this point we've already put together a base budget with certain outlining assumptions. We're at this point projecting to fully fund the CAN 5% as well as the 1.5% of our IT replacement, fully fund all of our retirement benefits, and funding the 14 defunded positions that we defunded in 2021. We're also implementing all of the uh, fees, I mean, salary schedule structures of the second tier and removing the 5% staff furloughs as per the MOU agreement for the side letters that we were able to achieve this past June. We continue funding our contractual obligations such as our debt payments. However, we do continue our annual vacancy attrition assumptions um, that were put in place in the prior year. And we are incorporating our Measure Q uh, retail cannabis tax measure on both sides, the revenue side, the assumptions, and some of the expenses that we are anticipating will come with Measure Q. And essentially, again, preliminarily, um, we're looking at our 21-22 general fund to be approximately $145.4 million with a use of reserves, um, deferred capital or federal economic relief if, if the uh, $1.9 trillion program being uh, proposed by President Biden passes, you have a possibility of getting some of those um, numbers for essentially a balanced budget. Uh, it's important to know. Excuse me, Carol. Somebody has um, a voice on. Sounds like it's somebody's got a phone, uh, phone call or something, and we're hearing it. Enjoy your day. It says. So, if anybody has that, could you please, um, it, you know, Thank you, mute man. your sound? Okay, go go ahead, Carol. Carol, you're um, doing a great job. Thank you. Um, so for 21 22, uh, we've started to put together this base budget of about $145.4 million. It, these are preliminary numbers only. I can almost guarantee you these numbers will be changing as we go through the next few months and are able to obtain more additional information as it relates to where we are economically. Which brings me to our economic impacts. In essence, what the economists are stating at this point that COVID has brought on the worst recession since the Great Depression. So we have not experienced this recession levels for the past 75 years. And they are really relying on the strength of the vaccine rollout as how quickly we can get out of this economic slump, so to speak. Um, the acceleration of the vaccine will draw how quickly we can get out of this economic um, situation. So in this um, particular article, you can see how they've provided three different economic recoveries coming out of vaccine, very much dependent upon when herd immunity comes into the United States. 
in this case, you can see they may, they're anticipating maybe by mid 2021, um, the herd immunity starts to hit and you can see us starting to come out. Um, however, all of this is gonna be contingent on the vaccine, um, how quickly we're gonna be able to recover um, economically. It definitely will take a few years. It's not a V-shaped economy recovery at this point. Um, obviously, a lot is un still unknown at this time. In January 8th, uh, the Governor Newsom did propose his 21-22 budget, and I wanted to share with you some of his proposals. His all funds budget is $227.2 billion. He's mostly focusing on urgent needs, basically vaccinations, opening up schools uh, safely, supporting small businesses, uh, preparing for wildfires. As you know, these last uh, 12 months, wildfires in the state of California has pretty set um, unprecedented number of wildfires. They're trying to get ahead of that in this next year's budget. Their general fund is 164.5 billion. They did uh, balance 21-22 um, budget on a lot of one times. As we have uh, mentioned a couple of times before, the state has received a windfall of capital gains revenues. Those capital gains do not come down to the city, unfortunately, but they're relying on a lot of those one-time revenues to help them through 21-22. However, they are anticipating that those capital gains will start to normalize and come down. And as a result, they are predicting they're projecting some deficits in the out years. So you can see here, even in the state's budget, how uh, they're projecting deficits from 7.6 billion all to $11.3 billion. As it relates to the federal government, um, President Biden recently provided an economic uh, relief proposal. Um, but before I get into those, um, his proposal, I did want to share with you where we're at with our disaster fund, because his proposal does allow for some funding for states and uh, local and territorial governments. In 1920, at the end of June 30th, total sources of funding were about $1.2 million. Most of that, those dollars coming from CARES Act against $3.4 in expenses for a deficit of about $2.3 million in the disaster fund. In 2021 to date, we received an additional $1.7 million against expenses of about $1.9 million. So to date, if we combine both fiscal years, we're about $2.5 million in a deficit mode for the disaster fund. Uh, this fund, as per the auditors and best financial practices, is set aside from the general fund. Um, and so at this point in time, the fund is upside down. We continue our efforts with FEMA to try to recover some of these expenses. Um, to date, we still have not been successful. So we really are hopeful for this um, economic relief proposal that President, President Biden's administration has come out with. So in his $1.9 trillion American Rescue Plan, um, he's really putting a lot of money into vaccine relief, distribution, testing, multiple faceted of, of programming to help fight this virus. He's also set a significant amount of funding for small businesses. He's providing, um, hopefully for direct checks for $1,400 per person. We know that the prior administration recently adopted $600 per person. He's bringing this up for a total of 2,000, so that additional 1,400. He's also recommending our minimum wage to increase $15 an hour. Uh, also allowing for additional um, leave time and expanding our child care tax credit. But in our, in our immediate for the city's offers, he's also want, recommending $350 billion in emergency funding. In this funding, he's allowing for more flexibility for CARES Act. So he's not He's allowing for more flexibility, what we can, we can use those dollars for. He's also talking about helping some municipalities and governments with the loss of revenues that have been experienced. Now, this package has not yet been passed, but we do know that it's been dis discussed over the last couple of weeks. 
some of our challenges and um, opportunities as we move through this, these fiscal challenges. COVID-19. COVID-19 will continue to have a financial impact for our city's coffers, our unemployment rates, inflation, businesses that are open but in a limited capacity continue to have impacts on our city's coffers. Um, the receipt of additional federal funds, as I've mentioned, FEMA has not yet provided any funding for us. Um, we've, we've exhausted all of our CARES Act monies. We continue to address um, CalPERS costs. They're gonna continue to increase year over year. And we're anticipating that through the actuarials that we've been receiving from CalPERS. The city continues to have capital and infrastructure needs. And we do um, need to start to, the process of implementing measure Q. So these are some challenges that the city is currently facing. But we do have some, some pretty good opportunities. As I've mentioned, a potential relief package from President Biden's administration, hopefully having some monies coming back, funneling back into the city, our measure Q. It's really diversifying the city's revenues. So we'll be obtaining more of the revenues through the taxes that was recently approved by um, the city, city residents and our potential short-term rental ordinance. We have some development that's still ongoing in the city. All of these are positive moving forward gonna help the city overall, especially in uh, fiscally. So our next steps is implementing Measure Q. We're rec to recommend to council the permit processing fee, the tax rate up to 7%, as well as some staffing um, requests to ensure cannabis tax is well administered. We're continuing to monitor the 2021 revenues as expenditures as we continue to move through the fiscal year. So uh, in February, we'll be coming back to you to the city council presenting the media report, making some adjustments to our current year budget. And then we're also starting the process of preparing the 21-22 budget. The presentations will be forthcoming to the council as we start to tie up some of those numbers, as well as providing the council with a long-term financial plan. So for the next few months, we have a very busy calendar. On January 7th, we did a proposed budget kickoff to the departments where we provided them with a base budget and instructions on how to move forward in preparing their budgets. Today, we're at the council retreat. On February 16th is when we're anticipating coming to the city council for some mid-year budget adjustments. Between April and May, we'll be coming to the council for some department budget briefings. May will be coming with um, either preliminary budget and with an anticipation of June 1st public hearing for the 21-22 budget and an alternate budget adoption date of June 15th. And June, July 1st is when our new fiscal year will begin. And I did want to remind you that one of our biggest accomplishments of the last couple of months is we were uh, rated by Senator Poors, where we reaffirmed our outstanding rating. And the reason that this is extremely important for us at this time is because we're in COVID, Senator Poors really had a very diligent questionnaire. We went through a very arduous presentation with them to let them know how strong the city is, how fiscally we're, we've been able to be proactive when it came to COVID, where we have the abilities and we've implemented options within the current year's budget to be able to realign the budget quickly, get ahead of anything that's coming our way, whether it's the revenues are declining, another shutdown, uh, the slowdown of the vaccinations and so forth as they come through. They came back and provided us with a very good uh, write-up on how they felt the city's uh, finances are, and they came back with a very strong economy, strong management, very strong budget flexibility, very strong liquidity, and a very strong debt and liability position. And this, I'm very, very proud of this because it really showed all of the hard work that we've been doing to make sure fiscally we're sustainable and we have the ability to quickly turn around the city's budget with the strong management team um, and city council that we have in place. Um, with that, um, I leave it up to questions. Uh, 
That was a very good report, Carol. Thank you, man. An outstanding job. And by, boy, your city looks so much better than so many other cities. It's wonderful. Can I ask a question? I have a question. Yes. Um, on the opportunities, you mentioned short-term rentals, but we didn't see the auto dealers. How is how is the opportunity? How are short-term rentals going to increase our revenues more than the autos? So it's not so much more than the autos. I do have um, it's it's more of uh, these are opportunities that I know that city council is currently discussing. If we were to open up short-term uh, rental ordinance, we would be able to increase our TOT revenues, for example, in this case. But however, we are not anticipating those revenues until the city council weighs in on them. Okay, but um, I guess it's my understanding that we actually are going to have several more auto dealers that are high-end luxury auto, um, auto dealerships that are moving into the city in addition to the one that just opened, the Audi dealership on Bristol. So I, I feel like that unless I'm just not understanding the revenue that's generated, it seems like that would be more money than whatever the short-term rental would provide. No, that was happening. We are looking at all of the revenue streams. So right now, all of the 21-22 budget adjustments are preliminary. And we are looking at increasing the year-over-year -year sales tax revenues into 21-22. That would include the new businesses that are coming on board. Okay, thanks. I just have a, a quick question, Carol. Yes. Um, so I, I think I heard you say that you don't have an estimated uh, revenue for short-term rental right now, but I think you did have um, an estimated revenue for Measure Q. Uh, what was that number built into the estimated budget? I'm just curious, uh, ballpark, yeah. Into the 21-22 budget at this time, we're estimating about $3.5 million of the tax, assuming a 7%. We're, we mostly base that on the city of Santa Ana. The city of Santa Ana's first year in, in their retail tax, they generate about $3.8 million. So in that first year, they're tends to be quite a, a bit of a lag. Um, and obviously in the out years is really when when that really took off. Got it, thank you. Okay, maybe time for one more question, Carol, if yes. there's one. Otherwise we'll go to goals. Okay, Carol. I, I have one more question, I'm sorry. On the... Um, you had 15 billion on the state budget and I thought it was 26 billion. Is it, did it get changed? I'll, I'll double check that for you, Mayor. Okay, thank you. Cause I know that at, um, at my town hall that Cotty shared about her SB 74 bill that is for small business grants and the, the way that they calculated the number, which was 10% of the $26 billion surplus, so $2.6 billion in small business grants. So I just, I would, if you could double check, maybe that number changed, I just don't know. Okay, thank you, Carol. That was great. We need to do goals before we can have lunch. So if I could, um, I'll have you take away your screen and I'll put up another screen. I am struggling with uh, Zoom right now with uh, taking away this fighting. Uh, For some reason, it's not cooperating with me. Give me a quick moment. It's not, hold on. It came up uh, with an option of closed window. One was in we, Zoom, another one was closed window. Would that do it? No, it's having me leave the meeting. So let, let me go ahead and, and leave the meeting and then I'll come back in. Okay. Wait, excuse me, I'll stop your screen sharing, Carol. Thank you. Oh, good. Is that Brenda?
can I ask one more quick question while we transition of sure. Carol? Yes. Um, Carol, you mentioned in the in the estimated 21-22 budget, um, I think it includes reinstating the, the defunded, was it 14 defunded positions? Did it include any room for additional positions or just reinstating? Oh, thank you. Uh, there we go. Uh, so in, in the 21-22, we are reinstating the 14 defunded positions, but we are also assuming with the measure Q that we would be adding some staffing to help with the measure Q. Got it, thank you. Okay, perfect timing. Brenda, was that you that solved the problem? Thank you, Brenda. Okay, always wanna thank people who do things good like that and a great report. Okay, I'm gonna share the screen because you're going to do goals before lunch. So I wanna go over the process of, of, of setting goals and what that's all about. So I'm going to share the screen. Now, a goal is a broad statement of intent, and it begins with an active verb, and it states what the organization needs to accomplish. So some examples, just to give you ideas, and in one, it shows one goal, uh, verb, and another, it happens to show through three. Uh, achieve financial stability and sustainability. That's a goal. That's a what, what you need to do. Attract, develop, and retain highly qualified staff. Attracting, bringing them on. Developing re typically relates to training. Retaining is obvious what it means. What you're going to be doing is you're going to have a chance to be in a small group, and the computer is going to send you to those groups. It's going to, they do it manually. And you'll be in a small group, and I only want you to come out with three or four goals, brainstorming in your small group, uh, for the next three years. And you're going to have a, a group recorder. Uh, one of you in the group will volunteer to record the goals. So if this was two of the goals, that they would be numbered one, two. Uh, and then they're, they're, unfortunately, for some reason, Zoom does not let the recorder send at, out the goals. The, when the goals are finished, the recorder has to leave the small group and send the numbered list of goals to Gail in the chat. Um, again, uh, it's just a limitation from, from the group. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put you in groups and what'll happen, in fact, I'm gonna uh, take away this for right now. And just remember it's what, and you don't say by doing so, such and so, or through, because then that's an objective. The, the, the words by and through are connectors to the next step. So this was, would be the whole goal, so would this. How you were gonna do it would be the objectives, and you're not doing that now. So the key is you'll be in the small group, you'll have a recorder that's, that volunteers at the very beginning. He or she will uh, type, type those in and then put them in the chat. If you put them in the chat and then send them out, they all go away. It's, it doesn't make any sense, but that's how it is. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to put you into uh, five uh, breakout groups. And what will happen is it will just go ahead. I'm saying that it's going to be done automatically. No, actually, that's too many. That's six or seven in a group. Let's do, let's do six. Then we'll have six in a group. So it's going to create the rooms. And it's going to tell who is in each group. And, and it's just a random thing. And when you're brainstorming goals, that's all you need to do. And you're only coming up with three or four goals in the 10 minute time, just so we have a list of, of like at 24 goals. You will also notice that the public is automatically assigned to a breakout room. Um, and I think they've got them in break, yeah, they've got them in all of the breakout rooms. And unfortunately, Gail, we're gonna have to take you out. They should have moved you, uh, we'll, we'll get rid of you okay all right so i'll just read where you are and what's going to happen is all of a sudden when i read all of the groups then then you're it's going to come on your screen automatically by your name which group you are in and it'll say join you have to click the word join and when you click the word join you will automatically be in the group that i'm reading now the public will not be talking but they'll be able to see the process and how it works. And you don't, when you're going to brainstorm, so you're not going to evaluate or discuss them, 
you're just going to you're just going to brainstorm uh, three three or four goals. And so in the first group, besides a couple of public members, is Carol, Don, Manuel, and Steve. That'll be group one. You don't have to worry about it. It'll tell you it's group one. In group two, we've also got the public. It's then Dan, uh, Lauren, and Susan. I'm not sure why they got confused. Uh, the, the next group is Andrea, Brenda, Jason, and Katrina. In the group four is Alma, Arliss, Jennifer, and Lori Ann. In group five is Jeffrey, uh, Kasama, Kasama, Kim. And in group six is Brian, Dan, and Rajah. Ray, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the rooms. I'm going to text you uh, or send you a, a, a notice in one, in one minute when one minute is over. So what you're just going to do, the first thing you got to do is get somebody in the group to volunteer to write down the goals. Be sure you have an action verb and be sure it's something that you would be working on for three years. What typically happens is a number of those that come out end up being objectives later because they're short term, they're not long term. So think about three years out what you think in light of what you've read. And you also have a, uh, that list of weaknesses that you might want to look at. And you're only coming up with three or four goals. So when, when you're through with the group, the, go, the recorder will come back and type in the chat. You'll put Gail Savoy's name on the chat and you'll type them goal one, goal two, goal three. That has nothing to do with priority. It just helps uh, because of the, of the next step in terms of getting process. What questions do you have about what you're being asked to do? Okay, then I'm opening all rooms. If for some reason the computer doesn't get somebody in a room, then, then you'll show up on my screen and I'll get you in one. All right, good luck. You've got five minutes, 10 minutes, I'm sorry. Thank you, Dan. Dan, were you a recorder? Andrea, were you a recorder? I was. Okay, then you just number them one under the uh, under the other in the chat. Go to Gail Savoy. You know how to do that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, which group were you? Three. Group three. Okay, so three is in. Um, were you a, a recorder, Brian? Uh, me or Raja could do it. We either one of it. So the only two, it's only the two of us. I think we had this done. Oh, some, that's weird. Okay. Weird. Which, and they got it all be about planning. Which, and sorry, which, Andrew, that was which, fun. <laughs> which was your? I'm sorry. Which group are you, Brian and Ray? Uh, Raja and I are teams. Uh, team okay. six. Six. Okay. Who's the recorder for five? I think that's Kim Barlow. Five. Kim. Is Kim here? Yes. Okay, Kim, just those of you that are recorders, just list the goals one under the other, number one, and then drop down number two. Do that in the chat to Michelle, uh, to, to Gail. Who's number four, please? Just to Gail. Lorianne, was that you? I'm the recorder for group four. Okay, thank you. And who's for group, I've got group three already. Who's group for group two? Uh, Lauren? Okay, just uh, type in one goal under the other. Be sure it has an action verb and then the action. And then send it to Gail Savoy. And who is group one? It's the only one I don't have. Okay, Steve, thank you. Yes. So just put those in the chat and Gail's going to be uh, listing those. Let me tell you the next process. Well, I, bet, uh, I don't want to interrupt the people. Just relax for a minute because if I'm talking and they're trying to write them in the chat, that's hard. So take a few minutes to hey Don Steve you're done um no not yet I was gonna ask Don we got cut off in the middle of his sentence on his third goal so <laughs> I was trying oh to get... okay Don help help him you, can I type it in Steve or, or no yeah. don't give it to Steve yeah Steve I just had create finance a financial metrics dashboard and operational metrics that are published and transparent okay Don that would be, actually be an objective that would be how you would do, 
if you were to do that, what goal would that support? Oh, um, the goal is to provide um, operational accountability and financial transparency. Okay. So that, improve... that would be that would be the goal rather than the other. The other is I, a I short can't... term thing. Okay. To carry out. Plus. Okay. Great. Were you able to get that, Steve? That change? Improve transparency and accountability, financial accountability. Got it. Go way to go. Okay. As soon as you've got it written in your uh, recorder, send it right to Gail because she's making an entire list chronologically. While we have a pause, I'm going to go get the food that's sitting in front of my front door. Has somebody sent it to you, Gail? Oh, Andrea's number four, number three group. We already have it. She posted it in the chat. Did you see it? No, it goes only to Gail. Uh, well, it, she posted it in the chat already. Oh, no. Was, yeah. Okay, Gail, you'll need to pull that out of the chat. Now, remember those of you that are recorders, it goes to Gail only. Here, I'll she, send it. I'll send said, it to Gail. That'd be great, Kathy. Oh, that'll it. help. And she doesn't have to go back and forth. Katrina's going to do it. Thank you. There you go. Send it to Gail. Wonderful. You get an A. So, Andrea, had you had you sent yours, or were you with Katrina? She was group. with me. I sent got, it to Gail. It's got all. it. Got it. She, I sent it to Gail. I was the first one to send it to Gail. <laughs> so Gail has it twice. Okay. How about the rest of you? Are you doing okay getting that typed? I sent mine in. All right. The rest of you. Um, sent mine in. Steve's right got it. Lori Ann's got it. Kim? Group five are in. Great. Um, who's in, who was group six? I realized I didn't write the name down. I, I sent it. it gives me it, that's sent also. It's sent. And, and sent group it. two? You, you sent it in, group two? It's all in. Okay. Then we'll just wait. Gail will tell me when it's done. Since they're all in, let me tell you the process. All of these are great goals or they wouldn't be there. Some of them will be objectives. And the only reason I didn't mean to pick on you um, uh, Don, but, but when he gave a very specific steps to something, it was an objective. Because remember, a goal is what is it you want to do, and the objective is how are you going to do it. And so that always happens. I mean, without exception, it'll be a mixture of goals and objectives. So what you're going to do is you're going to look at the group as soon as Gail has it up here. You're going to look at, at it, and what we do is a straw poll. It's not a, a vote per se, it's a straw poll because it helped me see what rises up and what falls out so that we can more quickly go to the goals. Now remember, it's not everybody's favorite goal. If you were in the group together, I would have given you each of five, uh, out, uh, you know, meeting face to face, I would have given each of you a three by five card and I would have told you to write down four numbers that reflected the four that if you could make the decision all by yourself, those are the four goals you would choose. It's a straw poll. So everybody, I call out the numbers and they put their hand up. And then at the end, I say, throw down your card. You're letting go of your favorite idea. Let's see where we, where we see a pattern. So you'll see all this in a minute. And I mean, I've done it with every group every time. So as soon as Gail's finished here, we will look at what, she, what she's got. And then I'll have you look at the list and the list will all be on one page. And I'll ask you, pretend only you, only you were deciding the four most important goals. I always choose more, one less than the most. And most uh, groups tend to do four goals first. And then at the follow-up retreat, they add a sixth one. It just happened. I don't know whether it will with you. We don't go with more than five. But uh, for the consensus, this consensus process, which I learned, are any of you familiar with CORO, the CORO Foundation? Okay, then that, that's, the CORO Foundation is over 50 years old. It's a public affairs training uh, foundation, and it's where I learned how to be a facilitator when I was a participant. And this, this 
process is what they gave me and made me decide. I didn't go to be a, a, a facilitator. I went to because I thought I wanted to run for the Oakland City Council and I came out knowing I should be a facilitator. They weren't going to vote for me and give me money anyway. Okay. All right. How are we doing, Gail? Uh, you're mute. Can you unmute it? Unmute it. Do we get to have a consensus about how many goals, or are you? Nope. <laughs> there are you some decide. things. There are some things I assign. This is one of mine. Okay. Okay. All right. Now goals putting it. Gear, I like see. odd numbers, not even. Uh, yeah. Well, you know what? Let Let's see what happens. Okay. Uh, let's see, Gail. We need to make that sheet so that it shows all of them. I believe they are all showing from one to twenty-eight. Okay. Can you all see twenty-eight? I can't, I can't see number twenty-eight. Can you do have, I see that. you have group three in there twice, actually. So, uh, which sorry. and you know, starting from I can make the type smaller. No, 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 I'm saying you've got no, group three. In no, there it's twice. don't make the type smaller, Gail. It's oh, that okay. it's, it's I don't the think same. she can hear you, Andrea. Uh, Say it again. Uh, Andrea, yeah, Andrea? So do, you is need it, to delete 17, 18, 19. What are is that from your group? Duplicative. 17, oh, 18, that's because 19. somebody, yes, somebody, somebody did. put them in twice then. Oh, that's because she, she, you left, remember to go to the door and somebody else put them in. So, so I take 17, 17, 18, 19, you said? Now it's. Which yeah, page? That one, so delete that. Delete it's 17 it. now. It's yes, already, it, it's already in there someplace else? Yes, it is. Yes, delete 17, now delete that 17. <laughs> One and more person it, telling her a second. Uh, <laughs> see, that's what you get for being nice to her. <laughs> and then okay. delete, delete that 17 as well. We've got developed housing policies in there twice. There you go. All right. Now oh, okay. Like, oh, that makes it okay. easy. Okay. Now, yeah. that makes it easy. Now yeah. you all can read also, it. Also, you should delete. Uh, it looks like no, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. There may be people, two different groups that said the same thing. Yes. You don't delete those. So, no, but yes, don't gonna... delete them. I'll tell you why. What I want you to do is that here's you have to make a decision because some people will say those two aren't exactly the same because they're not worded the same. So we'll leave it up. But what you don't do is you, do, you don't choose. And when you choose your four numbers, you don't make two of them ones that are duplicates. Marilyn, so I don't I, think he's, I'm saying, sorry. he's saying that there's duplicates from the same group. There's, yeah. There, there oh, may for, be. This is Tim Barlow, but I don't think. He's okay, from wait a minute. Five. I only want to talk to the recorders. Recorder okay. in group one, are there, is there, is there a duplication, dupl have any years duplicated? And I don't mean somebody else said it from another group. No, they're not duplicated. Okay, how about group two? Group, group two, two is two. good, we're good. Okay, how about group three? We're good. Group four. Group four, that's Lori Ann. I, I don't. Oh, I see. Okay. Yes, group four is good. Okay, group five. Kim? I only see one of ours. And if it's if it's duplicated, but it's duplicated by another group, don't worry about it. Is five okay? No, I don't. I only see one of ours. Okay, then. All right, number, um, number six. Is, there, is that okay? No, there's duplicate. There is or not? There is. Okay, but is it, was it duplicated? Because it was from your group duplicated. Same exact wording. It's the same exact wording that's Which number? being duplicated. Which number, please? The now if you can delete number um, fifteen through eighteen. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen. Eighteen? Yeah. You had four in your group? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Six, oh, that's just gonna make it easier. Okay, yeah. so what you're gonna do, group. <laughs> I've never uh, had one this more. Happen. Question I number have, twelve. I have a mistake. Yeah, sorry. So yeah. for for group four, something's. Thank, thank you for catching that. Yes. Right. Thank you very much. Yes. Okay. Is everything else okay? Yeah, yeah, All right. We're still missing yeah. some. Yeah, that's no, no. This is this is Kim Barlow. We are missing Remember the the only ones that should be talking would be the recorders who gave it to Gail. This Kim is Kim Barlow. Trying, but you can't hear her. Hello, this is Who? Kim Barlow. Yes, Kim? Yes, I, I was recorder for group five. Uh -huh. And we are missing all but the first of our, um, of what I sent. 
So then somebody else took it out. That's why I didn't want you taking things out in groups. No, okay. I no, they were never there. So um, even when there were twenty eight. Even when there were twenty eight. Okay, would you just dictate to her and Gail will just add them right now. Okay, ready, Thank Gail. You for yes, I'm ready. Increase housing opportunities. Uh huh. Invest okay. in public safety and resiliency planning. Can you do that in pieces? She's got it. Okay, good. Next is recruit, attract, and retain staff. And the last is reduce liability exposure. I only heard, I didn't hear past liability. Reduce liability exposure. Okay, got it. That's it, thank you. Okay, now you will see that number 21 is exactly the same as number nine. So you would not, if you, when you're choosing your four, you, if you wanted that to be one of them, you would choose one or the other of them. So you're choosing four different goals. Remember, they're three years. They're not how you do something. They're what you do. What is it that you're wanting to achieve? So as always, some of these things will be uh, good ideas for objectives, but you've got to make sure you're focusing on goals. So write down, right in front of you, write down four numbers and don't do any combinations. Right, say, okay, I have all the power. I can choose the four most important ones up there. And go ahead and write those four numbers down quickly because we're going to tally those and see what rises up and then move toward selecting your goals. And you don't write the words at all. You're only writing four numbers, only numbers, because I'm going to tally them by numbers. Marilyn, I have a quick question. So yeah. do you want us to put those numbers in the chat or just hold on? No, to no, them? no. No, you're just going to hold on to them. because I'm All right. Call thank them. you. Yes, thank you. I'm, I should have clarified that. You ask a very good question. And Marilyn, can we use the same number twice or three no, times? No, you may not. There's always somebody like you in the group. I appreciate that. <laughs> That's what I need, some levity in this process. <laughs> to that, I should give you special permission, but I'm not going to. OK, everybody done? Who isn't done? OK. I'm going to have to take away the goals because I've got to see the screen to count you. So, Gail, if you can take away the screen, and I'm going to look at everybody, and I'm just going to call out the numbers. And so uh, if I call out number one and it's there, then do you, do you know how to do the hand thing? Okay, show, somebody show me. Uh, Katrina, it's show me. It's not showing up on the screen here. I just wondered whether it was. Yeah, there it is. That's under oh, reactions. Look. Oh, we got, yeah, we've got different kind of hands. Isn't Go to reactions and you can do a thumbs up or a hand, whatever. You know what, this yellow Five one, five. this yellow one shows up better, Andrea, that you have. What, what is that one? Is that a different one? It's yeah. just, it's That's just under, it's under reactions. Okay, just so I can see it, but don't have some of, I, I see a happy face on one of you. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to call out number one. Lee, do, as soon as I say the number, Put, put your hand up, I'll count and give it to Gail and she's gonna record it. Okay, so how many said number one, hand up? 
No, I got a, oh, come on, Katrina put a heart. What's I don't know what, this, it's this no group. different. Okay, there you go. Okay, let's do it again. Okay, come on. Um, number Wait. one only. I can't remove it. There it goes. Okay, let's, uh, all right. Number one. 10. No, there's seven. Marilyn, I have, I like another variation of it. So do yeah. I not, I don't raise my hand now. Oh, no, I need you all to do the same thing. I, so, they, so they, they you, can, you know what? You can hold your hand right up, but but it's sometimes it's hard to see because of oh, what no, you've got. Oh no! Sorry, sorry. No, I didn't mean the the symbol. Sorry. No, I meant we have a few that are repetitive. I just have a preference for that's, a way that it's somewhere else. So I'm not. I don't raise my hand now. Correct. You only raise your hand on the four you wrote down. Don't you know? But the ones that are the two that are repetitive. You, if you like the idea, you'd only put one of that number. Okay. Marilyn, the little symbol fades after a couple of seconds and I think that makes it really hard. So we should probably then just- put your hands up then. Yeah, yeah, I didn't, I wasn't sure whether you were used to that. Okay, put your hand up if you chose number one and leave it up till I say number two. Eight, number two. Now you put it down, number two. Two. Six, number three. Three. Oh, oh, yep, yeah, yeah, it was three. That's right. Number four. Four. Put your hand up, four, please. Now remember, you can only choose four, not anymore. You can't combine them. Four for that one. Number five. Three. Number six. Three. Number seven. Six. Number eight. And so, let me count that again. Eight, it is harder to see the hand. Number nine. Five, number 10. 10, zero. Number 11. You had one, Susan, I think. I did? Oh, I'm sorry. See, I, it's hard to... Uh, you, it depends upon what your background is. So there should have been one. And that was on 10, wasn't it? Yes. Okay, now we're ready for 11. Aren't you glad we don't have 50? Anybody? Anybody on 11? No, zero. Number 12. One. Number 13. 13. One. Oh, wait, Lauren, did you, were you putting your head up on that one, Lauren? Okay, it's, it's just one. 14. There was two for that last one. All right, let's try it. Let's do 13. I may have to go back to hands in the future. 13, where's two? I see Arlie, I don't see, where's the other one? Oh, Jennifer, Jennifer. okay, two. Two is on 13. 14, yeah, it's weird. Okay, one and 14. 15, three, 16, oops, Alma, did yours just come up? And can you unmute yourself? What one was that? Mine was for 15. Okay, let's do 15 again. 15, 15 if you did it. That's three. Okay, now we're on 16. Uh, do I see? Anybody I'm missing? That's zero. How many are there now? We got we took out a bunch. How many are there, Gail? 22. Okay, how many said 17? One. Number 18? 18? Anybody 18? There's two. 
Number 19? There's, there's three, Marilyn. Oh, there was how, three. how do I miss this? Yeah, I think it's because of the hand thing. Let's try it. Hand 18. 18, we've got Steve. Who else? Lorianne. Who's the third one? Don. I believe Don raised his hand. Don, okay. Nine, uh, 19. <laughs> 19. I'm seeing two. No, three. Wait a minute. Do it again. 19. Do I just have two? I have three. So three is 19. 20. This is the hardest part of the whole retreat. I'm seeing. All right. Do it again. Three. Three. 21. Three, twenty-two. Anybody twenty-two? Okay. Now, don't look at. Oh, Kim, did you? What? I can't hear. Kim, I. You have to mute yourself. Is, was that? Was that? Twenty-two. You? That's me. Twenty-two. Oh, that's you. Okay, you get twenty-two. All right. Lower. Oh, and that's you. Put up something different. It says lower hand. That would have been neat. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to look back at the list. And Gail's going to put that up. And it's going to show the numbers. And she's going to highlight the ones that went to the top. So it's a place for me to begin. So. Okay. So what she's done is she's highlighted the ones that, that had the most support as a place to begin. And uh, so I, I'm, these are not going to be in priority order. They're going to be list, the, the list of goals on the record. There'll be the mission statement and under the goals, and it'll say three year goals, not in priority order. So I'll just look at them as I see them. Uh, uh, even if you didn't select it, do you think uh, recruit and retain high quality staff members? Uh, is it important that you need to have a staff goal? Are you okay with that group? See, I can't, unfortunately. Yes. I, I can't yes. see you. Yes. I, I, I've got yes. to talk to Zoom. Okay, so we'll leave that one. That'll be one of the goals. Create economic development policies to provide for the long-term fiscal stability of the city. Now, this is a case in which the goal is provide long-term fiscal stability for the city. One of the ways, one of the objectives would be to create economic development policies. You see how that's different? So the goal is really a fiscal goal. So would you agree? And, maybe, and the word is probably achieve long-term fiscal stability of the city instead of provide for. Does that yeah. work for everybody? Achieve long-term fiscal stability. And you wouldn't need yeah, to say fine. the city. You wouldn't need to say of the city because these are the city's goals. Yes. Is everybody comfortable with that? Okay. Uh, it's, I think that's all right. Strengthen public safety and keep the community safe. Now, uh, do, is safety an important goal for all of you? And do you need both public safety and community safe? Or is it strengthen public safety? It's public safety, strengthen like the services, the city services of public safety and keep the community safe. It's two, it's two different things. I agree. I agree. So how would you state it? Because it sounds like it's- you're, it strengthen, sounds, you're strengthening your public safety with the focus to keep the community safe. And oh, you know what? You know what confused me was the word and. Strengthen public safety to keep the community safe. There you go. Okay. You know, it was like it was two different ones with the and in it. Everybody okay with that? Looks All good. right. Then let's look at maintain and enhance the city's infrastructure and equipment. Infrastructure and equipment important? Um, is, can I get a clarification what is meant by infrastructure and equipment? Okay. You want to share the typical group? I would add IT under that city infrastructure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. IT is IT is that, always. That's what I'm asking. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's all, yeah. There's all the systems, infrastructure. Right. You know, we'll bring you in, Steve. We'll yeah. make sure you're looped in. No worry, Steve. We'll make my vote for number four. Yeah, Steve. <laughs> we'll make sure you get to uh, your own objective under that one. 
Okay, now, this, what happened is what usually happens. It collates under, a, like, like, a number of four. The same thing had happened last week with another city. So I recommend that that's where you start. And what we do is I summarize where we are, and, I, and, and I'm, you're going to be able to vote, I mean, select which goal you want to work on. And then and as soon as we have that selection, I'm going to give you a lunch break. So I'm going to ask I'm, a question. Yes. Uh huh. Go ahead. Um, just for clarification, so we're all on the same page, including myself. Uh, so, what you're proposing is that these four goals are the only goals that we yes. have. Is that yes. right? Yes, that's right. Okay. So I'm going to say that I think that um, I can't agree to that because we have to have housing as a oh, goal. Well, then, then, we'll, then let, let's bring that up. We don't go over second, five. Is that a motion? Is, no, 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 we're, we, don't do, we don't do that kind of thing here. Okay. So now, I is, would what, recommend what, that we have five goals. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll ask the group, and it's a group consensus. Um, where is that goal? Because uh, we've was, got a house, housing policies is not. It was a goal. listed That's under nineteen as housing, and it should have said housing and homelessness. We no, just, there's the number five and number right there. Uh huh. Uh, develop now, see develop housing policies. That's an objective. Um, uh, we're, we're, give me the other numbers. Oh, promote housing choice and stability. And nineteen. A, and nineteen is increase housing opportunities. Is this for the homeless? It's supposed well, to say no. no. No, we have a housing element that we're in the process of okay. doing right now. Okay, that's fine. So then, so then, let me see. Um, that's number nineteen. So, did you want to say increase housing opportunities for the homeless or including the homeless for everyone? Including the homeless for all Costa Mesa. Then, then you, yeah, then you so. leave it. Then you leave it the way it is. The number nineteen. Uh, are all the rest of you comfortable with that? I am. I well, actually was going to mention the same thing. Okay. And we're not. We're, I, I de we definitely don't go over five. I'll tell you, you'll you'll realize that when you when you start doing this process. So we've got five, but they're not in priority order. You've got one that relates. In fact, Gail, can we see it on the? Do you have it on the uh, the top page of the record? I don't have it there yet. I can't. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, because you're showing this. At the bottom. Okay, so we've got we've got uh, we need to. You need to move this down so I can see these five goals now. Let's highlight the one that's number 19 in yellow, too. Oh. Oh, uh, oh you did. Oh, I'm sorry. You, saw, you did it on the bottom. That's okay. Yeah. Wait a minute. Recruit and retain high-quality staff. I didn't see the summary. Achieve long-term fiscal sustainability. Strengthen public safety to keep the community safe. Maintain and enhance the city's infrastructure, equipment, and IT. Now, um, IT is a part of infrastructure. Do you need to say that just to be clear to people? I think so. I okay. think that's fine. That's fine. No problem. If we could say technology instead of IT. Mm -hmm. I like okay. that. Is that okay? Okay, we'll change that. Yeah. And because the and public. Does that also include? Does infrastructure include public spaces? Parks. Otherwise, I, I do think there's sort of a missing component of our of our physical spaces. Well, some people say uh, infrastructure and facilities yes so if you want to say infrastructure facilities equipment and technology to make it clear i vote for that there yeah. we go. <laughs> no we good. don't vote here good one yeah. <laughs> it's funny. Well, or, okay. or i express uh, agreement with that how's that oh good way to go <laughs> katrina okay <laughs> now what we're going to do is we're going to have five different groups and Gail, uh, let's let's just name these. We'll, group group one will name staff. That's why number I two will say fiscal. Number three, safety. Number four, infrastructure. Number five, housing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the breakout. Great. And this time, I, I'm just going to assign Marilyn. you. Uh -huh. Oops. What? Apologies. What? Just one, on the third goal there. That seems to me sort of similar to to what we did with the second goal. It seems like the goal is keep community safe and strengthen public safety is a is a action under that. Uh, I'm sorry, which two are you talking about? Uh, so, so the third goal we have listed. Yeah. 
it seems to me that keep the community safe is the goal. Oh, that's and redundant. Public safety is an objective under the goal. Okay, group. It's what one do you think? method by which we can keep the community safe. Okay, group. What do you think? She's right. Okay, how do you want to state it then, so we have it right? I see. I see the. I see the point. Yeah. So the goal so would how be to keep the community safe. So, uh, okay, are you all okay with the word keep? Yes. Okay. All right, okay, we've got it. Yeah. Now what we're gonna do is go to- Are, the are we gonna include public safety in there though? As an objective is what's being discussed. Yeah, no, understood, but you're not moving I, on, Marilyn, are you? No, I, I'm getting ready to move on, so I want that clear. Are you wanting to say keep keep the keep community, the community and safe the and and strengthen public safety? I just would would hate for public safety not to be in there and just to be assumed. I agree with the chief. Yeah, and yeah. It, this this doesn't say it, this doesn't say what you're asking for. So let's reword it. How would you word it? I, I think just uh, what was recommended. Just you flip you flip what was there. Yeah, strengthen public safety. Well, so maybe it's strengthen the, public safety and keep the community to keep the community safe. That's what we so, had before. Yeah, yeah. No, that's okay. All we do, yeah, all we do is flip it. Yeah, yeah, yeah just, it was, flip just it. to flip. Yeah, strengthen yeah. public safety to keep the community safe. No, I think what you have there is oh. right. Keep the community oh, no, no, safe. No. <laughs> they don't but agree just with make, you. Just this make is, and to a two. Yeah, two. Yeah. Keep the community safe to, to strengthen public safety. Strength, no, no it safe. should say oh. strengthen no. public safety. Safety to keep the community, community safe. safe. Yeah, strengthen public safety to keep the community safe. Okay. To, to me, that's a little bit exclusive. So, keep the community safe. There's there's many ways to keep the community safe. Yeah. Right. Then I mean, when you say we strengthen about public going safety, back to the, and you know, okay, if say, it's strengthen public safety and keep the community safe. Can you all live with that? Because yeah, we don't that, need, as we had originally. Yes. Yeah, that's right. That's okay. Can I ask a question? Okay, let's get. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to move you on, but you go ahead and ask it. Yeah, sorry, Dan. Dan, when you say public safety, are you referring to the departments of the police and fire? Is that what you're saying? Right. Yeah, primarily police, fire, emergency management, th th those elements. Okay. All right. It all could right. include code enforcement, though, right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I don't think it's it's all inclusive. Sure. I, I I agree with Arliss. I think it's worded wrong, but I I'm not gonna I'm not gonna keep you from moving on. What would be, how would you word it? I think what I was just saying, I agree, is, 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 is we're trying to keep the community safe, keep the community safe, and we may say through strengthening public safety, you can say yeah. that. Yeah, so and that, then that gets into the objective. And I'm fine with that. I just don't want to lose public safety in that yeah. particular goal, I, if, however it's placed. Um, if, if I can comment on that, because I think the, the the the, um, the comment I have with that reasoning is that then it implies that the only thing we're doing is public safety and not other aspects such as like community events or things like that or like encouraging walks. I think this is the best way because we give the public um, the sense of like we're strengthening our, our public services, right? Police, fire, et cetera, as well as doing other things that make us safe like, like neighborhood watches or like, you know, more engagement in public spaces. I think this is the best way to keep both of those ideas. If we okay. flip it, yet yeah, then it becomes just only doing public safety through like city city stuff like police, fire, how code, about et cetera. We, how about if we say strengthen public safety to keep the community safe? That's, say that's, that's, what, I, I, that's what I think was there in the was there. Strengthen public safety for what reason? To keep right, the community to safe. Is, to Arliss's point. That's not the only way to keep the community safe. We can keep the community safe by providing really good programming for high-risk youth. We can keep the community safe by making sure that we have a code enforcement team that's responsive or more responsive or just as responsive as they are now. But, you know, we can do it through so many different ways. We can do it through, you know, a homeless shelter and many other mechanisms. So there's a preventive aspect to keeping the community safe in addition to the um, public safety, fire, and police part, but it's, it goes far beyond just police and fire. It's the holistic approach to serving the community, many different ways of keeping the community safe. Library. So, Lorian, okay, so Lorian, you know what? I need to, I'm needing. Then, right? I'm sorry? 
You would support the and instead of yeah. two, right? Correct. Not right. The I'm, I'm going to suggest that, that you leave it the way it is now. And when we get together in six months, one of the things we do is review, revise if needed the goals. If that is ending up being awkward, I mean, the goals themselves usually don't change much, but sometimes the wording does. But I think that the group is pretty clear about what this, what this is supposed to include in objectives. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you in breakout rooms and I'm going to recreate them into five groups instead of six. So we have one for each, each goal. And. So Marilyn, a uh, quick question. Go ahead. Uh, uh, yeah. There's a, um, in the increased housing opportunities, or maybe this isn't for Marilyn, but just for the group, is that broad enough? Is that encompassing everything that we wanted to do as it relates to housing? Yeah, I've been wrestling with that because I want to put like finish the short term rental ordinance in there, but that's not really increasing housing opportunities technically, well, right? Yeah, that's that's an objective. But what I'm thinking about is there's increasing housing opportunities, but then there's also not displacing uh, residents, right? That's not necessarily increasing housing opportunities. So I'm just struggling with that goal. It feels a little limited right now. It's, it's not correctly. Yeah. We need to include a homelessness element to the housing opportunities somehow. You, you know, you can so, do some of this through objectives. Can I ask a question? <laughs> All right, go ahead. So um, the one thing that in terms of the housing, I think it, it's a web, you know, it's, it's housing opportunities, it's housing in the right place, it's the vision for the city, it's, uh, it's uh, housing for individuals experiencing homelessness. So, so I do agree that maybe that's not the right phrase, but that's, I think we have to encompass sort of those three priorities that we're already currently really invested in. And then why, I tell you what, my suggestion is that to go with these goals and like that suggestion from Katrina, the, if those are the three areas that the group is working on that, that goal, wants to have an objective for each one of those, that's where you put it. And, and um, at this point- But I actually got, think that the community wouldn't, I think increasing housing opportunities is maybe not. So how would you reword it? Diversify or stabilize, diversify and stabilize. Um, you know, they're, I, I'm just giving you words. They're not perfect, but we can't leave it as just increased housing opportunities okay. because it's really more about diversifying and, you know, like the short-term rentals thing. You know, okay, diver kind of how, about, how about using the words diversify and stabilize housing? Dressing. Okay, we is, is housing, diverse, housing is, needs to reflect to well housing to reflect community needs or something like that. Yeah, that's the that sentence. Okay, diversify and stabilize housing to reflect community needs. Does fine, that work? we'll work rest, on it. Oh, I know you're fine, Susan. I need to get feedback from the rest of the group. Is <laughs> Absolutely. It, is the group? It's, is the it's group better than I have now. Okay, so we're. I would I would add the in, increasing in that in Susan's there. So diversify, stabilize, and increase housing. Increase housing. Okay. Can you yeah. all support that? Yeah. See, it's be it's better than it even was. So if you've gotten better, that's fine. Well, thank you, Jeff. Thank and, you. and what I don't want to do is redo each goal. Marilyn, I'd like to make a statement. All right. Which who is it? Uh, this Lauren. is Lauren. I want to make a statement, <clears throat> and this is actually though though in the entire group, we have these goals laid out, but. The very first one, recruit and retain high quality staff. We can't do any of this if we don't meet the first goal. I'd like for everyone to keep that in mind that we really need to work on that in order for us to achieve long-term fiscal sustainability, strengthen public safety, maintain and enhance the infrastructure, all these things that we want to do, we need to make sure that we have the right people in the right place. So you that's said that in yeah, you said that in this goal, Lauren. That's really very that's very clear. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put, I've got uh, one group is called staff, one is called fiscal, one safety, one infrastructure and one housing, just because we needed to have a, a short name for this. And when I go assign, I see everybody's name. So I'm going to ask the council members first and one of the groups can have 
two council members in it, and that's not in conflict with the Brown Act, um, because there are seven of you and there's five groups, it's okay to have two. So first, I wanna know which two council members, or one or two, uh, will be in the staff goal. And, and call out your name, because unfortunately I can't see you. No, call out your name. Lauren for number one. Oh, thank you, Lauren. And who will work with Lauren on that? And then I'm gonna get um, executive team people too. Who else? Okay, then let's go to executive team people. Who, who executive team? Kasima. Okay, Kasima, found your name, just checked you. Okay, who else we need to have? Brenda. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Brenda. Brenda, okay, let me find your name on here. Brenda, I've got you in there. All right. Okay, I'll, jump, I'll jump in there. Who's I? Sorry, Lorianne. <laughs> Remember, I can't see you all. Okay, Lorian. I'm going to stop with that one and go to fiscal. So we go to fiscal, and who is in? Andrea. Andrea, was that you, Andrea? Yes. yes. You, okay. And uh, it, it, is there another council member that wants to be in that, or I'll, I'll go, go right to? Call. I did. I, call okay. out your name, please. I'll go wherever. Okay. Just put me wherever. There's somebody doesn't right. want to. Sorry, Katrina. Oh. Katrina, I'll, I'll put you in here in money. How's that? Go ahead, Don. Put Don in there. That's Thank fine. you, Katrina. Oh, I'm going in, Don, uh, Marilyn. So put. Oh, Don. okay. <laughs> Don, let me find your name here. Don, Don, and Dan always get. Don is good. There you are. Dan. Got it. Okay. So at this point, um, okay. Wait a minute. This didn't. Let Let me ask a question. Lori, Lorianne, we... are you in fiscal, Lorianne? No, in staffing. You're in, you're in staffing. Okay, I thought I'd put it in the wrong person. Okay. All right, um, I need I, I need to get somebody else. I was wanting to give you a break at 11, 1230. So I want to move you on in terms of who else, does anybody else want to be in, in fiscal? It's Dawn and Andrea. Uh, He's asking. Yeah, anybody, I'm talking about executive team. Any other? Oh. It would be me, Carol. Carol, of course, Carol, that makes sense. There we go. Now, for some reason, it's not listing the names, and it is listing the names under staff. I've never had that happen. Huh. I wonder why. Oh. There are advantages and disadvantages. Oh, there they came. Okay. Now I'm under safety, and who on the council is on safety? Arlen. Manuel. Manuel. Oh, Arlen can have it. Manuel. You can have two. You can have two. Who else? Oh, uh, who's the other? No, person? no. I, I. There's only three of us left, so artists can have it. I can go on infrastructure. No, if you want safety, that's okay. There's two. There's three of you left, and there's three, three of them to go. I, I would, I would prefer to be an infrastructure. I just assumed that someone wanted to be on, oh. on that one instead. Okay, I'm going to end up having to reassign you. That's the way that works. So, who is going to work on on safety? That's a, that's a council member. Arliss. Arliss. Okay. And who else is going to work on safety besides Arliss? Now I'm, now I'm talking about uh, executive team. Dan Stefano. Brian Glass. I was waiting for you. Who else? Brian we Glass. need to have at least three. Who's the other one? Brian Glass. Okay, there we go. All right, let's go to infrastructure. Council member on infrastructure? Me, uh, Manuel. I don't know why safety didn't get. Um, this is, it, it's not putting the names in for some reason. Uh, um, uh, let's, let's, I've, I've never, had, okay, let's, let's go to infrastructure. Who's the council member? Manuel. Manuel. That's right, Manuel. Thank you. I don't know. Usually it puts the names right in. I've got it checked off. Who's going to work on infrastructure with Manuel from the executive team? Raja. Raja Setraman. Alma. Wait a minute. Uh, Steve. Wait a minute. Alma. Now remember, we still have one month left in, in housing. Alma, Steve, and there was one other that I didn't, I'm looking at the list. Raja. 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 Okay. All right, and now let's look at housing. This is so weird that 
it's always put who all the people are and then <sighs> housing who's in the housing jeff jeff okay who else besides jeff i've got jason kim Jen barlow who kim barlow okay kim good i still need jennifer lee jennifer lee uh jason I was going to lobby for infrastructure, but it seemed like that filled up, so I can do. Um, well, okay. I only need Susan. Uh, Susan, where are you going to go? I was going to go to housing. Okay, that's good. And then Jason, if you'd rather go to infrastructure. I would, if there's enough. Yeah, space. that makes more sense. <laughs> or safety. Yeah. 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 See, I, yeah. I think safety is a good place for you because your quality of life, you know, keeps kids entertained. Mm-hmm. Okay, now let's look here for a minute. That makes sense. Um, yeah. Okay, so we've got under staff is Brenda, Cosima, Lauren, and Lorian. Under fiscal, I have, let me sure you hear your name Andrea, Carol, and Dawn. Under safety, I have Brian, Arliss, and Dan. Under infrastructure, Andrew. I have Alma, Manuel. Raja and Steve, and under housing, for some reason the thing ran out of. So those of you that are on housing, no, I don't. This is so weird. It. There we finally got it. Jeff, Jennifer. I think it's because there's a lot of people. Jeff, Jennifer, Kim, and Susan on housing. So what you're going to do is you're going to come back after lunch, and what you're going to do is come as a whole group, and I'm not going to open up the rooms yet. Um, because I, if I open up the rooms, then you're all going to get pushed into that uh, group. What I will do is I will also um, look, and you can do go off to lunch. I will also look over the lunch hour to get uh, the public in these different groups. I can't, I can't, um, it's going to have to be random is the only way I can do that. Marilyn, so, I didn't hear, I'm sorry, Marilyn, I didn't hear which group the mayor's in. Oh, she was so nice to be anywhere that now she gets her chance. I wrote her down. Uh, Katrina, where would you like to go? You can be any place you want. Although where the shortest one is fiscal. I thought I put you in fiscal. Where do you want to go? I'll go wherever. Okay, let's see. And Marilyn, did you get Jason? Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Just, I'll work it out so you're going to fiscal, Katrina. I thought I, I, thought I put you there. Okay, so now only, is, what's um, the question? Sorry, Marilyn, not to interrupt, but the only concern I have is the Brown Act maybe? No, of, it's only two, and, there's only two council members. That's the most that can be in it. You can have more than two. Can't you have Mar three? Marilyn, we, we already have two council members in fiscal. Uh, why don't you add Katrina another spot where we'll have two? I yeah. see what you're saying. That's I okay. See that's okay because we have seven council members. Yeah, but I think it's better not to have three council members. That, that's we, fine. Okay, so somebody else from the... Ron no, just doesn't want me in the group. <laughs> no, I'm trying to balance it. All you right. know, I'll, I'll, I'll take Mayor Foley. I want to make sure. Okay, I, I, need to, I need to know who's going there. I've never had trouble with doing this. You right play right there. there. But like I'm looking for the public and I'm not seeing them listed. I don't know. What, so we've got Brenda and Cosma and Lauren and Lorianne and staff. In fiscal, we now have who in addition... That was the staff person? Carol. No, Carol's already there. It's Andrea, Carol, Don. We were going to have one more staff person in fiscal. Yeah, this has always worked. So who would be, who'd be willing to? There's, there's, there's four of you in staff, because one of the staff people come oh. over to fiscal. Brenda, Cosma, Lauren, or Lori. Not Lauren. It can't be Lauren. It can't be a board member. It's right now. Brenda will go over to fiscal if you need me to move. Brenda. Okay, you'll go to fiscal. I'll move you over to fiscal. Okay. All right. So now let's just do a quick, let's do a quick summary. So after the beginning, you got your introductions. You looked at the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. You've developed the mission statement and you've gotten the goals. So you deserve a break. You'll have a 30 minute lunch from 20 of one to 110. God. So I would encourage you to uh, turn off your sound and turn off yourself. 
but come back a couple minutes before uh, 10 after because I want to start right on time and then I'll go over the process with you. Meanwhile, I'm going to look to see what happened that they took away my, my public members to put in. I don't know what happened. So uh, that's why I'll spend my 30 minutes. But you're doing really, really well. We had to be through goals before lunch and you made it. So congratulations, enjoy your lunch and Marilyn, we'll see at 110. Marilyn, can we, is it okay? Would you consider a 40 minute lunch perhaps? Or is, it, or is that pushing it? Um, well, I really expected to be done at 12.30 and was gonna do that. Uh, are, 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 are you gonna have trouble with a 30 minute lunch group? If everybody, I mean, if you if you are, I'll change it. I'm just gonna. You're gonna feel like I have a fire hose in you the rest of the afternoon. Okay, let's not do that. All right. Okay. No. Well, no. Go ahead. If you want, to, let's do one fifteen. Let's split it. Let's come back at one. Be be ready to go at one fifteen. That's 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 uh, thirty five minutes. Copy that. One fifteen. One fifteen. Okay. okay. <laughs> Enjoy your lunch. Marilyn, Mute yourself. Marilyn, did you get Jason for public safety? Uh, let's see. I did. I'm expecting to see you there, Jason. Jason. Okay. <laughs> Looking forward. Big expectations for you, Jason. You know, I don't know what is going on with this thing. We'll make sure, uh, because I've got to make sure you get in there. So, uh, you know, I may have to put you in after I hit go to group because you, you disappeared and so did Katrina. This is my problem. I know it's tempting when you've had so little time to yourself and I'm sorry that lunch had to be that short. I'm going to give you the, um, screen that shows how to write objectives. And unfortunately, uh, my breakout thing is covering part of it up. Objectives uh, need to be smart. S, can you all see the screen? Anybody not see it? I, I can't see you all, so you'll have to talk to me. Does anybody we can not all see, see the screen? Wonderful, thank you. Okay, so every objective has to be smart. S for specific. M for measurable, A for attainable, R for relevant, and T for timely. Now, the format for the objectives is very clear. It says, by what date between now and July 15th, who in that room and in this group will be accountable? And what you do is if it's a staff member, you put their title. If it's a council member you say, or the mayor, you say mayor, and the, or council member. And it's for what specific measurable result? You know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this away and just pray it's there when I come back. So by when, who will do what? So for an example, by March 15th, the finance director will update the board on the budget. That's not a particularly good objective, but it was something I, I thought is clear that it's got a date, it's got a who, and it's got the outcome. So. Every objective, the when needs to either be the first of the month or the 15th of the month. And that's to help with monitoring. So because every month, the management team goes over uh, the goals and objectives and updates them. And then it's in the board packet every month to be able to go over. And so it's, if, if one objective is the second of, of, of March, say, or, or let's say uh, June, and another one is the 15th, and another one is the 18th, it's too confusing. So the, the when is the first or the 15th, unless a specific date is needed, such as a board meeting. So in that case, it would say at the June 12th board meeting, the city manager will present to the city council for action, such and so. Now, it can't say for approval because you'd be in conflict with the Brown Act. It's got, if, if you have a board meeting, if you have a meeting, you've got to have those items that you're going to vote on be on the agenda. So we say for action. And if you said for approval here, it would mean that you all pre-approved it, that whatever the, the uh, city manager presented would, would be approved. Now, the latest date is July 15th because your next date would fall sometime between July 15th and August 1st. The who is board, staff, committee officers who are present at the meeting. I don't think we have committee officers. That should have just been board and staff. 
Uh, a staff member lists their position, a board of committee officer. Yeah, this is, I'm sorry, I just realized the last group had some committee officers. List their position and full name. And then when the group is, you're going to have a volunteer again. When the time is up or the group is finished, the group may be finished because you're only writing two or three objectives. The temptation is to write a whole lot. Don't do that. This is six months time. You want to have some significant objectives, two or three. But what you have to remember is staff, for example, on board has a whole lot of other things to do in addition to these objectives. And in, in addition to that, you want to be sure that you're able to, to make progress on these. So the, the, what the recorder will do is to go out of the meeting and in the chat, send the two objectives, two or three objectives for the goal. And please indicate your group's uh, goal name and number each objective in chronological order. So again, uh, and I don't know whether I've got everybody back yet, but it's by when, who will be accountable for what specific measurable result, the first or the 15th, unless it's, it could be an event. And so that would be the date used. Otherwise it's the first or the 15th. It's either a staff or an executive team member or a board member and not more than two or three objectives. And if you have ideas for others, then those would, those would come um, after the retreat. That would be a part of the next steps. So let me show you what this will actually look like when it is printed so that you can see an actual, uh, this is a sample that I use for the monitoring, but I want you to see how it looks. So for example, this was an exa anonymous example, it enhance and maintain infrastructure and facilities. So you've got, and this is how Gay will type it, is on a, on a um, uh, matrix. What date, who's accountable for what? And then the status, I'll explain this on the very last of the retreat when we talk about monitoring. This one was done. This one needed to be revised. Here's why. This one was on target, meaning that date that was set was right. So all what you're doing in these groups is you're coming up with two or three for your objective, for your goal, and you're numbering them in chronological order. So this one's first of September and then October and February. What questions do you have about process? Because it makes it a whole lot easier if you ask the questions now instead of getting in the room and realize you have one. So what, what you're, you've got a goal assigned and what you're going to do is draft objectives, but get a recorder first. And I've at random put a, a, a public member according to the phone numbers that I had. I put them, uh, there's somebody in each one of the goals that's from the public. Questions? Marilyn, I have a question. Okay. Yes, this is Arliss. Yes, thank you. Uh, you mentioned, um, uh, you know, keep in mind that staff have other things they're working on as well. Uh, are these objectives intended to be um, obviously associated with the mission and the goals that we already discussed about, but, you know, not something that staff might already be working on? It could be. It could like be. Like it's not just sort of continue. Yeah, no, it could be, uh, <laughs> yeah. it could be uh, something that was worked on. You're not, you've got about 40 objectives from the 2019. So it w you would right. not be, yeah, have, <laughs> take a look at things uh, that, if that's in your group. And if there's something that staff, that's why we've got staff in each one with council members. And that's a good question. Mm -hmm. So if there's an objective that fits into that goal, it's okay to use that. And then yeah. you've got to decide at, as another, as a part uh, separate from the retreat, if you've got other objectives, Right now, I'm trying to get you focused on what's really doable when you've got such a shortage of staff and time and COVID and potential wildfires, and we just got to bring it. My background, you may, you may or may not know. I have a master's in psychiatric nursing, and people ask why I changed, left psychiatric nursing. I said I didn't. I just changed my venue. Uh, so it was all about communication and everything. So I'm very, I'm probably over the top concerned about people's mental health in every group that I work with. And one of the things that this, and this is why I always start with that positive question of you introducing yourselves to each other and realizing, gosh, there's some things that I did enjoy out of this terrible time of COVID. Well, in the same way, I want you to be realistic together as you propose objectives. And there's got to be consensus one person can't put up an objective out of the group and say, that's it. That's not, 
This is a consensus process. What other questions? Yes, Katrina. I had one more clarifying question. Oh, sorry, can oh, I ask my I... second question? Okay. Uh, so we developed these three-year objectives, but you're no, asking, no, I'm sorry, three-year no, goals, six, but you're yeah. asking for six months six objectives. Months. Right, because okay. then you make progress, and then you look back on what you did, and then you then you look at the next six months. So, I mean, okay. like with Los Angeles Department of Water and Power, they they were they were finishing up their their goals and and establishing new new objectives for the next three years instead of five. Go ahead. Katie. Thank you. You're welcome. So on the uh, on the objectives that we have from our, our right, right. That's what I was referring to when I said, if you're going to you're going to have a, 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 one of your next steps is going to be to look at those, not at the retreat or at this workshop, you're going to look at those and see if those are uh, some of those that are valid. But there's like 40 objectives there. It well, you didn't let me finish. <laughs> oh, I beg your pardon. I'm sorry. Yeah, so so there might be 40 on this piece of paper, but many of these have been done. Okay, so there's not 40 outstanding. So what I was going to ask was, um, as part of this goal session here, are we to assume that those that are already on here that are still outstanding, that those will stay, or we are to assume that we are starting fresh? Uh, it's neither one. It's okay. that you you take the, the objectives, not more than two or three here, and it'll be pushing to get done by four with two or three. And what you do is one of the next steps, one of the follow-up steps besides reading the record and updating monthly, will be to look at, have that list looked at and determine which of those need, need to be addressed. Because that's obviously, if, they're, if you're into them, you, you don't, it, it's easier when you finished something and start over. Those aren't lost, Katrina. And that, that's what I meant to refer to when I said in, in, in answer to Arliss's question that there might be something that's on that list that fits perfectly, use it, but you're probably not going to be able to use all of it. Does that help? It does. I just think okay. there, a lot of these have been done, so we're good. Yeah, we, and if they're done. a lot of progress. Yeah, yes, you did. And that, I could see that. I mean, you had five single space typewritten pages of accomplishments. So <laughs> you don't you don't do anything with with that except you can report out to the to the community uh, in some other format. Okay, okay I you. I'm going to give you 30 minutes for these objectives and then we only have 2 hours to get consensus on those objectives, objectives and do the next steps follow up. And as I told Katrina at the beginning when she was concerned if it was after 4 we're going to shoot through this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put you in groups and I'm just praying that as I go into breakout sessions now, it will come back with you all assigned. Otherwise, you will watch me cry. Ah, still there. Praise God. Okay. So what's going to happen, just like last time, is all of a sudden it'll come on your screen where you are and, um, and the, the public members should somehow, somehow or another get that information because their numbers phone numbers are on, and I don't know whether they're all here or not, but that's the, all the ones that, that actually checked in. So it probably didn't take those that left. So you'll go into your group. You will get a recorder. You'll work only on one objective at a time. You'll first say, what action are we looking for? And then you'll look at, okay, who in this group would be accountable? And it might be one person or it might be several people that would work together. Remember, if it's a staff person, it's their title. If it's a council member and a mayor, you put mayor or council member, so, because the public you know, uh, doesn't know the names of all of the positions of the city. That's why we use, and then by when, and then who, and then a realistic time frame. So you can assign somebody in this whole group, even if they aren't in your group, to carry it out. Because when we review it, we will review each of those objectives. Is it clear? Is it relevant? Is it measurable? Is it the right person or people? Is the time frame realistic? What questions do you have before I hit open the rooms? And Gail, I'm sorry to kick you off again. They, for some reason, won't do that. Yeah, Lorianne? I think um, to the mayor's question about the 
uh, previous 2019 goals. So I think to the extent that um, we have those goals with us right now, some of us do, some of us may not, I think it's probably a good idea to make sure that if there is something on that 2019 list that doesn't happen, that we have a shared agreement about whether that's still moving forward. So my concern is that we have that long list, um, which is pretty ambitious even in 2019. And while we've done a lot of it, some of it's still not done. And then walk out of this session today with a whole new list. So just so that we have understanding and we don't have confusion leaving this retreat today, I think it's important for us to take a look at that. And so as we're going, Marilyn, when we come back out of our breakouts, then I think, and we, we have that time to go through the objectives, I'll be tracking that as well, um, which ones were on the list before and see if there's a shared consensus that that still is gonna happen. Otherwise, I'm afraid We'll be working from two different lists. Okay, Lorianne, there's not going to be time for them to review that list. There's, it, we've got an hour and a half. We, we, uh, this, you're going to work from 1.30 to 2, and uh, they can glance at the list and see if there's an objective that would fall in there, but they're not going to be able to go through all the lists and decide which to carry forward. It's just, between, there's, between, between me and the mayor, we know which ones have gotten done, Marilyn, so it won't be too bad. I'm just saying it for the sake of the group, but I think we can <laughs> do that between the two of us and fuse it in. I think it'll be fine because we'll be working on the objectives too. So I'm going to Okay, well, we'll see if it works. I've got a commitment okay, that you've got I this agree. done. I agree. I, I, yeah, I mean, if you, do, if you think you can do it, but it's, remember, I made a, I, I don't, I keep my promises. I know. Eight eight thirty to four is as okay, long as we can go. go. So so you're okay. not going to be able to brain. You're not going to be able to to, uh, to take apart all these objectives. You're going to have to listen to the objective and then see if there's consensus. And if there isn't, we don't do a bunch of wordsmithing because there's not time. Just, okay, I'm going to open the group. I've got to get you started. You've got thirty minutes. If you get done earlier, which I think I think some of you will, and by looking at the list, I would. I'm not surprised you look at the list. I just didn't think you'd look at it and talk about it. Just two or three objectives. Don't give us more than that. Just what you want to see focused on. And then you'll have a five-minute um, notice and a one-minute notice uh, to come back. Now, it's conceivable that your group may get done early. So what I want you to do is to immediately leave the group and go and put the objectives numbered in chronological order on, in the chat to Gail. So some of you may get through in 20 minutes, then that way she's got those that we can ar already start with. Because typically the afternoon is all spent reviewing objectives that were written in the morning. But see, we had a, a presentation time for about a half an hour. And so we're, we're, we're needing to make this up. So go to the rooms now and I'm opening them all and good luck, be sure to get a recorder and be sure recorder that you write uh, on when you put the things in the chat, which goal it is. Is it staff? Is it fiscal? What is it? So, so Gail knows where to put it. Good luck. See you at two o'clock. I left the whole place when I did that. <laughs> Okay, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna get kicked out because it just does it automatically. So, were you a recorder, Lauren? No. Okay, who's the recorder? Hold your hand up, please. I am Cosima. Okay, Cosima, would you go ahead and type it in the uh, chat for Gail? Yes. Andrea, Andrea, were you also one? Cosima, sure. which which group were you? I'm um staff. Staff. Okay. Okay, which one were you, Andrea? Fiscal sustainability. Uh, you were a recorder before, weren't you? I, I like writing. Okay, good for you. <laughs> safety. Who, is somebody here for safety? Is that you, man? It's a lot going who, who else is a recorder, please? Speak up. Hey. And, uh, Jennifer, who for, for which group? Housing. Housing. All right. Brian Glass for safety. Safety, Brian. Good. And how about infrastructure? That's all I need. Infrastructure. Oh, that would be Raja. Who is? Raja. Oh, is he back? Yeah, there he is. Raja. Yes. Okay, you're giving him. You getting to uh, Gail, please. Yes, I'm gonna. Okay, because what we're gonna do 
usually over the lunch hour, she types all these so we can start right away. So what we're going to need to do is start with whichever one uh, she's had finished. And then I'll be asking you questions, five questions about each objective in order to get consensus. So what we need to do is, um, Gail, as soon as you're through with one of them, can you put that up please, for me? Yes. Please. And I'll ask you five questions. Is the objective clear? Is it relevant? In other words, does it match the goal itself? Um, is it clear? Is it relevant? Is it measurable? Can you, will you be able to tell when it's done? Is it the right person or people in charge? And is the time frame realistic? So we have, um, I've got to give you a stretch break in here, but, but we have two, less than two hours to get through that and the next steps. So I just know I will need to be moving you uh, quickly. Which goal are we working on first, Gail? I am currently working on the fiscal goal. Okay. That was the first one. That Take a stretch while she's doing that because um, this is unusual that we don't have them already in, in the uh, computer. I just want to know if I got assigned anything by anybody else. <laughs> You'll find that out later. <laughs> Things. We tapped there you. Are, you. <laughs> there are always some people that are really popular. The name just popped up. Besides, we, had, we assigned people that didn't have anything to do with it just to make it very challenging. <laughs> uh, yeah. The one that usually gets the most is the city manager. But I'm doing finance. Has, she, she can delegate, I'll, right? I'll be taking notes on that, let me tell yeah, you. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> she'll find out who is in the group and she'll say, and now I delegate it too. If you've got more than two people, just know this in advance. We will ask for a lead person because the lead person just makes sure the group uh, reports monthly the progress and gets it going. That's that's all being a lead means. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, unfortunately, I can put up the first goal, but I cannot do any work um, on it with when the other objectives come in. So okay. All right. Get just... started. I will share my screen. Okay. Make sure this is the one. Yes, there we go. Okay, here we are. So the goal is um, achieve long-term fiscal sustainability. And we won't have the B on it. It's just to help now. And this is all of those things are to help her with the measurement. So ignore that. So I'm going to take these one by one and I'm going to ask the question. First question, is the action clear? And I, I try not to wordsmith. If it's clear, then fine. Is it relevant? In other words, does it relate to the goal? Uh, clear, relevant, is it measurable? Will you be able to tell if it's been done? And then uh, is it the right person or people? And then I'll ask those people what the, if the time frame is realistic. So by June 1st, the finance director, economic and development services director and city manager, and we'll need to designate a lead, but we're not doing that right now, will present Measure Q cannabis permitting fees, ordinance and procedures to city council, is this for information or for action? It's a be so for action. For action. action. Then, we'll write, then we'll I'll make a note of that for action uh, because we need they need to know whether or not that was just a report. Okay, is this action clear? Yes or no? If not, say no. And, and yes. Then you can, okay. All right. Is it measurable? Will you be able to tell if it happened? Yes. Okay. And uh, is it uh, appropriate that it would be the finance director? Well, we have an ad hoc committee. Okay, so then you are the lead of the ad hoc committee? Yeah, it's myself and Councilmember Gameros and Councilmember Chavez. Okay, right. so we can talk about this, whether this should be the ad hoc or not, but ultimately the staff report will be presented by and the final writing of the ordinance itself. Yeah. So in other words, the ad hoc committee is is meeting and making recommendation on the language. So they correct, should but you're not presenting to city council. Ultimately, staff is responsible for getting that done. Well, not so, necessarily. We have okay. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We can't we can't get into this debate yet. Is the finance director somebody that's involved in it? Yes. And the economic and development services director are they involved in the committee? Yes. Okay. And the city manager is not, I assume, or is she? 
It's okay. city attorney. And city attorney. Okay. So we'll have them be responsible and, and then you can choose whether or not you want to say the committee as well. Do you think that that's important? We need to have a, a lead person when we have more than, than two, like the finance. So finance. I, think, I think simply put, we can just put me because ultimately oh. the finance director, the economic development services director report to me, the city attorney is involved as well. And we would be making recommendations to the council based on our analysis research and discussions with the ad hoc committee and taking okay. that. So we'll put you as the lead, but I'm gonna leave these other people in here uh, that, are, that are key and not the whole committee, okay? Now, is, Ju is June 1st a, a realistic date, Lorianne? I'll ask the lead on each case. Is that a realistic date? The dates will be before that. So the June is the, is the end date, let's say. So by June 1st is fine. There'll be okay. interim steps in between before sure. that. Okay. All right. Everybody clear on how this works? Does that one sound okay to everybody? Do we get to change? Do we get to suggest a different date? Because well, that I to me is too late. Now, why is it too late? Well, we're we're trying to get this moving because this is an economic revenue generator for us, and the the goal has been to get it approved by March, and then get it implemented in April and May, so that people can start opening up their businesses. And who's speaking? I can't see. I don't see it's you. Katrina. All. Okay. Uh, 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 Toss that back to you, Lorianne. You said by June, that means not later than June. Is the not later than date, sometimes you don't have the specific date at this point. Is, is it possible for it to be sooner than June? So there are aspects of it. So to the mayor's point, just to, um, just to be clear, so there's no worry that it's not, you're not gonna start seeing aspects of it sooner. This has multiple components. So for example, the ordinance is gonna come to you sooner. We'll be sending that to the ad hoc committee next week but the permit, the permitting fees, and then probably the staffing proposals, that will be in the budget. So there's there are parts that come sooner and parts that come later. So by June 1st is sort of the outside date of the last thing that gets done, but there'll okay. be other things that come before that, knowing that we wanna get this implemented before June, but there'll be certain aspects that go into the budget, like the staffing and things like that, and that happens closer to that June timeframe when you adopt the budget. And this is the way that it, that it does work is that you don't have to put all the steps in between the tactics. You put in the outcome that you're looking for at that date. So I'm, I'm a literal reader. So I'm looking at what and what only talks about the permitting and the ordinances. So that's why I'm raising that. Okay, there, there, may, there may be other objectives that come up in time, but this is, this is the one that they're saying has to be done so the staffing, the staffing needs to be included. That piece does need to be included. Okay, permitting so, fees, staffing. Fees, ordinance, maybe procedures and staffing. There's a staffing piece that needs, okay. Okay, and staffing after procedures, Gail. Okay, she wants to do fees, ordinance. That's why I was raising that. Yeah, yeah. she, Okay. Gail has it twice, no, okay. Yeah, no, she's doing it. She's gotta have time to get it together, okay. Look at the next one. By June 1, the city manager and economic development services director will develop a scope for economic development planning consulting contract. Now, when that scope, where does that scope go after it's been determined? So the, the thought here is that we do want to hire a consultant to develop a complete economic development plan. We're trying to bite it off in, in baby chunks though. And so we thought that the first and most important step is to figure out what is the actual scope of work that we want that consultant to do and the parts of the scope of work. And then what is what what is that, who does that need to be? Does that need to be presented to anybody? Lorianne, you and the- uh, That would be the, the, the first step before getting a contract. So I wouldn't expect that to necessarily get approved by the city council. That would be what went into a, into a contract. So, so I have a question about that, the June 1st, it just because the budget is going to be kind of established by March 15th, and wouldn't this need to be folded into that budget? To, I mean, we can put a budget to it without having the details of the scope of work complete. Well, that's why I'm asking the question as to what, what we're, okay. what's the what? I mean, I just want to know what the what is. So, is so the what is the scope of work? 
So your deadline is June 1st to establish the scope of work. Do you wanna have the deadline for establishing the scope of work a little sooner so that we could budget it in the budget? That's all I'm suggesting. It's your idea. I'm just suggesting that maybe you wanna move it up. I'm good with the date that I put in there. Okay, well, let's, let's, let's see. Let's get the to the this team discussed the timelines and with what's going on um, in the city and in order to make it something that that the team can meet, that, that staff can meet, we yeah. put it that date. If we make it any sooner with everything going on, we really didn't think it was feasible to meet that okay. date. And, and we've, got, we've got to listen to the people who are, are uh, doing the work. It sounds like you would develop that scope of work and then present it to the city council, right? by June 1st, what the scope of work would be. Lorianne, I'll let you weigh in here. And see, monthly, you're going to update these. And some of these dates will get sooner and some will get later, right. depending but, upon what's going on. It sounds like we want to have something that's in the budget that's funded to have a uh, economic development planning consulting contract, right? And so it sounds like in, we're just developing the scope by June 1st. That's doable. So I think, I think it's clear. I feel like it's clear. And so can I ask okay. a question on the budget part? Because if it's by June 1st, develop the scope, then the council is going to vote on that. We will have voted on the budget by, you know, June 15th, thereabouts. So but, uh, not enough time. That's all I'm trying to, it seems yeah. like the timing. You're making, sense, you're making sense, Katrina. I think what's not clear here is, are you putting money in? The, I think I heard you say you're putting money in the budget before the scope of work, you're, you're setting aside in the budget. Is that correct? Correct. You fund it, you can fund it before you actually issue the scope or even develop the scope. You just target that funding for the budget, uh, you know, a certain amount of funding. And that's, that's fine. We can put that in as a placeholder and then actually approve the contract and the specifics as the scope later, subsequent to that. So are you saying that this is okay the way it is for the scope? Yeah. Okay, so, uh, and then just say, and, and, and I assume after you do the scope of work and present to the city council, right? You're gonna present that scope of work to them. Yeah, if, if the council yeah. wants to engage in the actual scope process, that's fine. I mean, typically we get sort of high level direction and then we drill down. I could work with an IHA committee. We could do it either way, it doesn't matter. See, Whatever. I, I'm, I'm just suggesting, I'm not suggesting that they're getting involved in it. I'm just suggesting that once the scope of work is done, you're gonna let them know about it. It's just an information item. Is that right? Yeah, it can okay. be. Yeah. yeah, and then that's that. Pre, when you just present it and you don't say for action or direction or consideration, it just means it's a report. It might just be in the in the agenda packet. Okay. Now is so June first apparently is a doable date. We've got to do things that are doable dates, and, and yet questions that are being asked are are important. The third one is by July 1st, the finance director will develop and define a quarterly reporting format to improve fiscal transparency and financial metrics. Is this statement clear? Develop and define a quarterly reporting format to improve fiscal transparency and financial metrics. We get to the date last. Is this clear? Yes or no? Okay, I'm not sure what improve financial metrics means. Is it improve fiscal transparency and define metrics? That may be too nuanced. I, I think I get it. <laughs> is that okay? All right. Is, there, is everybody? That's fine. I've, yeah. okay. do, do you see the relationship to this and the goal? We need to show, show the goal too here. At least I'm not seeing it. It's the, remember, it's all around achieving long-term fiscal stability. So if it's clear and it's relevant, is this the right person, the finance director would do this? Yes. And then is she going to present that information? Is that considered operations and it just goes to the city manager or is that something that would have to be voted on? I would think. No, it does not have to be voted on. Okay. It would be a report. And present to the city manager then. It, it, it would be a report. So my only question for the group that worked on this is, uh, what do we mean by financial metrics? Well, I, I think that to Arliss's point, if it just simply says define a quarterly reporting format, comma, including financial metrics, comma, to improve fiscal or fiscal transparency, that 
to my mind, covers what's included in the, the recording. Okay, so it'd be a come after format, including financial metrics that would be there. And, and then two, improved fiscal transparency would be the end, right? Right? Right. And, and then it, usually what you do with the information, is this presented then to the city manager? The, it would be a report out. I believe right. And report out? The council. Oh, five to the, and report to the council. Maybe report is a better word than present to the council. About, there's just a difference between presenting and reporting versus the, the council for action determination or for direction, just as long as we avoid saying approval. Okay, so um, is this- Should we is include this, that it go to FIPAC first or no? That, that would be up to her. That's a good idea. Yeah, I mean, and if you want to put that in, you can. can. Whoever's responsible, do you want to put in including, it's called FI, FI, FIPAC? Sure, yeah, we use the same reports for FIPAC and for council. So when we say oh, city, oh, okay. FIPAC, we'll get it as well. But if we want to be really clear about it, we can include that, that's fine. So then it would say finance director with input from FIPAC? Is that what it is? It would be report out to FIPAC as and well. And report to the city council. And how, how do you, is it the number five or what is it? Letter F as in Frank, I, P, A, C. Like that? Yes. Is that, that right? Good. And, ju and July 1st was okay, right, Carol? All right, good. Thank you. That's the first goal and it's done. Now we're going to look at the next goal. Okay, I'm going to have to stop sharing and go to the chat. Oh my goodness. Where did I leave off? Jennifer. Hey, Jennifer, which goal is this? Looks like housing. Jennifer, were you housing? Housing. housing. Okay. Can you see that? Can no. you all see this? See, she hasn't had time to type it in because she usually has time to do it before. Can you see the so, grid? Yes, you can see it on, you can see it on, are you, are you, you wanting us to go to chat, Gail? Uh, no, I, I have the grid up again. Do you see that? Okay, no. Okay, then I didn't officially do the share screen thing. Hold on. I'm learning here. All the nuances. Okay, I need to. Are you, so you'll need to type those in? Uh, yeah. Okay, why don't you all take a five minute stretch break? Oh, okay? it'll take one minute. Oh, okay, if that's all it'll take, then we'll just wait. All right, yeah. uh, this doesn't drag well. Darn, this does not have a good dragging mechanism. Here we go. And you can start, Marilyn, so I'll just okay. pop Okay, you can see what it is at the bottom that she's typing anyway. By July 15th, the uh, development services, it would not be the department because departments don't do things. Who's the, who's the what's the title of the person? Director, Jennifer? Yes. Okay, director. thank you. That should be director. We'll complete a public review draft housing element, and then what would you do with it? Where did it go? It should say to present to the city council. And present to the city council. We'll complete so and present. The public review draft is released to the public. No, this yeah. is just, it, it, it can just be a report. Right, it's a report to city council at that point. Yeah, if it says report or or, or present, that doesn't mean it's the action that, that's gotta be. Okay, and is, is July 15th a doable date? Yes. Okay, everybody clear? Comfortable with that? Okay, let's look at the next one. By July 15th, the development services director will bring a plan to the city council for senior housing at the senior center site. Is that, is that clear what that is? Is it relevant to this, this goal? 
Maybe we just clarify what we mean by the word plan. Okay, please. Um, my understanding, it, it's not a, a design plan, for example, but um, closer to a implementation plan. Oh, yes. present an implementation. Program. Okay, present an implementation plan. We could, we'll capitalize maybe both of those, implementation and plan to the city council for its, for senior housing at the senior center site. What questions do you have group or is this clear? So Jennifer, does that implementation plan include um, funding, financing, conceptual design? I'm just trying to get an idea what the components are. Yeah, I was not thinking conceptual design. Um, Kim, are you? There you are. Um, so I was not thinking conceptual design. It was more of a, um, uh, what are the steps involved to get to a point where we have a plan that we can present to city council? Exactly. That's, that's what I think of when I think of implementation. Yeah. Plan. So that'll include, um, you know, sort of, sort of the framework of what that looks like, um, how it would be done, uh, with whom it would be done, what the legal steps are necessary to make it happen. So would that include, because of what you've just said, I don't know who just talked, but would that include then the city attorney and somebody else for those other elements? Yeah, Sounded this is like Kim. It. Yeah, it, yeah. Say, okay, so Jennifer, you'd be the lead. And then and then Kim, the city attorney, and, um, and then you mentioned somebody else. Who else? Uh, Jennifer, who else would be logical to be putting that together with you? Because these don't have to be just individuals doing it by themselves. Is there anybody else? I would expect that um, that there may be some involvement from public services. So Is what involved? position? Uh, public be, services director? That would be Raja. Okay. Public services director is the title. And probably um, Susan Price, from assistant city manager, since she has kind of the housing in her scope, right, Ms. Laurie? Does that make, that make sense? Susan? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, sounds like a good group here. And so now in view of this and the help that you've got is July 15th a doable date, Jennifer? Yes. Okay. Yes. And I'm still, I'm sorry, Marilyn. I'm still stuck sure. on implementation plan. Um, yeah, it sounds more like a process. I, I, I think maybe it's more of the development program. Is that what we're talking about? Yeah, that sounds better. Okay. Development program. Present a is that okay with you, Jennifer? You're it may or may not include design and concepts. It just depends on, you know, how it plays out by then. Yeah, it's sounding like at this point, the, at this point, the it's restricted and it can be expanded uh, as as you go through it. So by July fifteenth, we've got the development services director as the lead, the city attorney, the public services director, Gail. That's EC. Uh, and the assistant city manager will present a development program to the city council for senior housing at the senior center site. And no, just know that you are in the six month period, occasionally another objective gets added to something. So I'm gonna move on from that. That doesn't mean there's nothing else that's gonna happen on housing, but those are the two that came out of the group. So that's a good, good job group. Let's go Gail to the next one that you've got on your Okay. Um, Marilyn, there was a number three for housing. Oh, there was? Where, okay. is, it? Where is it? Was it down lower? Yes. Oh. I sent, I sent a one, two, three. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, because we'll I, I thought you might have had three. This is it, Jennifer, <laughs> right here. Okay, we'll do that. It would be great if Zoom would have it so that whoever's doing the work, the recording, could just type it in into the chat right from the meeting room, but that you would get kicked out of the meeting. I mean, literally would have to check back in. And for some reason, it's got it set up. With it. So the date is March 15th, and that would be the department services director would be the one. will evaluate housing needs to A, assist with immediate operations, and B, to implement longer term programs such as AD, is that a J or a U? So little, ADUs? STRs and home funds. 
So let me read that again. By March 15, 2015, the Development Services Director will evaluate st staffing needs to assist with immediate op operations and to implement longer term programs such as ADUs, STRs, and home funds and present the results to whom? Does that go to the, the city manager? Yeah, I would say so. Okay. See, of course, if it's policy, of course, it's the council. If it's and uh, the who would be finance who director. At, now, in and addition? Uh, yeah. Okay, Paul. finance. Who else? The, this is a development services, finance department, and HR. Was I was going to say uh, human resources, I figured. And right. so who should be the lead of this one? I think it's me. Jennifer, you? Yep. Okay. So that so it's uh, the development services director is the lead finance director and human resources manager. And everybody clear about evaluating the staffing needs to assist with immediate operations and implement longer term programs and present the results? That clear? Can I ask a question? Pardon me? I have a question about that actually. So does that mean evaluates? So when I hear evaluate staffing means it assumes to me that you think that the need will impact city staffing. Um, do you mean by that also that you'll consider what you can outsource to consultants or what kind of scopes we could be? Uh, yes, it could be um, city staff or it could be contract staff. So outside consultants. So whatever this. And what we talked about, Andrea, was that staffing solution and I've been talking about, we need somebody to come in and get us caught up. And then yeah. also there's some unique uh, specialty projects that we need somebody to just like we did with the sober living homes, you know, the ADUs is one of those examples, you know, they're all in on ADUs and they're the ones responsible. So that way staff can work on just the day-to-day -day work without having that burden. What, what about something like, um, you know, com complete resource planning for the execution of blank, blank, blank. That sounds good. You mean in addition to this? No, instead of evaluate staffing, sort of sounds like. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the staffing obviously came up in the weaknesses as a, a critical area. No, you no, might no, want to add. It's the same thing. She's still addressing staffing. Can you repeat what you said? I like what you said. Um, let's see if I remember. Something about like identify a resor uh, resources or uh, a complete resource, resource planning. Complete resource planning. Thank you. <laughs> Glad somebody knows what I said. <laughs> okay, this, so a complete resource training. Planning, yeah. Planning, and that is in place of evaluate staffing needs? Evaluate yes. staffing okay. needs and complete resource planning to da 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 da, -da. Okay, oh, okay, that, is that okay with everybody? Evaluate staffing needs and complete resource planning. There we go. Okay, okay. so I, I understand the what. Um, I am concerned about March 15th. Okay. That's weeks from uh, now. Yeah. We haven't started. Well, so that's not going to happen. And this, so just so you know, the date was just, so it can be the June 1st date. I, I'm i just wanting to make sure, because I feel like what we talked about earlier with the first one, it's the same issue. In order to do this, it has to be in the budget. My understanding is that in order to be in the budget, you got to know this by March 15th so that you can build it into the budget for the, the next year's budget. But if that's not the case, then whatever date you think is appropriate. Okay, what do you think, Lorianne? So I'm gonna to turn to Kasama on this one because she has to be very heavily involved and we haven't gotten to the other goal where <laughs> Councilman Rigamaris and I put together a nice robust plan there too. So <laughs> Kasama, are you maybe uh, April or May? Is that more? along the lines, knowing that we need to get it into the budget process? It, if it's just the evaluation of the staffing um, and not actually filling any particular positions, um, it's fine if it's, if it's a little bit sooner. Um, and we're not developing new classifications. That's what takes more time. If we're using existing, existing classification levels, that's easier. So in terms of you know, making recommendations for the budget, so I would be okay with like a late March date. Um, We'd say it April depends 1st. on how, how it involved it will end up being. Okay, so then it'd be April 1st.
but this says not only evaluate staffing needs, but complete resource planning. Yeah. That should that be coming out? No, we can leave it in. I just think okay. that the time frame. So how about May uh, April thirtieth uh, or May fifth, April fifteenth? It'd, it'd be the first or the fifteenth. So May first or fifteenth, Cosima. Wait, 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 wait. But what that part like? I feel like that should be the easiest part, right? Like the consultant part should be easy, right? Okay, wait a minute. Let's let them say what they mean by what they mean. Look, if it's all consultants, that's easy. If we're talking mm -hmm. though about what's jumping out at me is to assist with the media operations. A lot of our media operational needs that are currently struggling, those are ongoing day-to-day -day operations. And so we're under-resourced in this department, period. Some of the work can be done by consultants, but we need to build that, we need to build the base as well. So, so can we step, I know we're only supposed to have three, but I mean, this, it seems like we've got two different things going on in this one with two very different dates and two different uh, efforts. So it's, so you want it's to split the complete staffing resource needs. planning for, it's complete resource planning for B and evaluate staffing needs for A effectively, right? Does that make sense? Then why didn't you split it? It's okay. See, if I, if I told you three, if I told you three or four, then everybody come up with four. So we'll do, we'll do, um, evaluate staffing needs uh, to assist with immediate operations and then um, complete resource planning. And then that's for B to implement longer term programs. And since staffing needs, does that then change the lead to human resources on, on this April one date? I think Correct. they'll be involved in both. Yeah. Right, but, well, no, no, that, this, but there's a difference between being a participant, you could be a, definitely both, but yeah. we need as the lead. And so uh, that's oh. when it's staffing, I, I would just wanted to, I, my job is to ask questions for clarity. So is that something that really would be human resources? This one right here, because it's staffing. And that's then down here, manager. this would be development services. Oh, that's city manager. Yeah. Or, or they me. could be co-leads. Okay, co-leads. Co-leads, yeah. Yeah, good. And, and we, oftentimes there are co-leads. No. Okay, so there'll be a co-lead on both of them, Lorianne? No, because a, a customer wouldn't be as involved in oh, the, yeah, the second one. sourcing part somewhat, yes. but not, not as much. That'd be more Carol. Finding okay, money. Yeah. and Carol is the fi finance director. Okay, so the first one is, is not development services as the lead, right? It's the human resources manager as the lead on this one. On is that, that right? one, your co-leads. Oh, Maybe that's right. I'm sorry. Co-lead right. co -lead with, with the development services. This next one is the finance director and who else? Development services director. Okay. Development services director. Hold this on. is down in this one here. Okay. Who do we have down here now? Uh, development services director as the lead with... I mean, I guess it would be co-leads again, development services director with the finance director. With and if it's only two people, you don't need to call them co-leads. It, it, it's just, it's only if you've got more than two, uh, three or more. So they can, they, they, they would just be responsible. So what's the date on this? Um, uh, Carol and, uh, and Jennifer, what date on completing resource planning? Your latest date is July 15th. I think it's July 15th. Yes, I agree. Jennifer. All right, July 15th. Okay, let's go to the next goal. And so after that I, goal, I, I'll give you I'm a sorry, break. I gotta ask about these dates because this is, we're gonna, we're gonna sort of live with this and I wanna make sure. Um, as I understand what this goal is, the goal is to get somebody on to help us process ADUs. The council's voting on the ADU ordinance on Tuesday night. And so are we gonna wait until July to bring someone on to process the ADUs? Seems like that's a more immediate need. So, um, so since I wasn't involved in this group, are we, uh, for this one, are we thinking that it's uh, a consulting type of situation or is it some, like we, that we could bring during mid-year? Yeah, so the idea was to have a short-term, long-term plan. 
And you know, you and I talked about this. I talked about this with Andrea at, at some point that we've got to get some help in here so that we need to get the, our teams some help to get stuff processed. I think this is the this would be a, a March 15th or sooner type of situation. This one for sure. Yeah. That's what I thought we had said a minute ago. So I was surprised by the July 15th. Yeah, because this is like find a consultant, outsource it, write the contract. If we don't have the budget for some of these things, then we budget for it. But I think okay. for yeah. some of them, like let's identify a, a consultant okay. now. And then for the staffing, we we have vacancies right now that we've got to fill one and two, then we need to evaluate what additional staff are we going to need to bring on for the long term for uh, the housing, uh, this is, remember, this is under housing. Um, what additional staff are we going to need to bring on to, to, you know, to maintain all of our housing uh, needs? So that's, that's kind of where... Maybe the word here is identify staffing needs instead of evaluate. Maybe. Evaluate and identify, I don't know. Or, or evaluate and identify. Okay, all right, I've got... I'm, we need to get this one wrapped up. So Trying let's to look. find short-term, long-term solution yeah, right. because we just need help right so now. So why don't we write in short-term and long-term staffing needs to assist with immediate operations and report the results to the city manager. That makes sense? Do we want to change immediate operations to core services? I feel like core services is what we're talking about in this first one. And the second one is a little bit more. Yes. Easy short-term rentals, ADUs, home funds, yeah. those are longer term things Great. that we haven't planned for yet. That's yeah. a good addition, yeah. yeah. So I'm is it sure. written correctly then? Uh, so immediate course. operations should be core services. So remove immediate operations or what? Yes. And put in? Core services, core department services. And, and would it be clear to, the, remember the public reads this too, is department services, do they know what department you're talking about? Oh, or core, oh. Core, or to assist with with, ser with services for all core departments. Core development or, services. With core development services. Development services, department services. <laughs> <laughs> okay, development services. Okay, evaluate and identify short-term and long-term staffing needs to assist with core development services department programs. Yeah, that might be better. It says services. <laughs> yeah, okay. just put programs on the end there. Okay. All right. Uh, now, I, I'm moving you on, okay? We got to get to another and goal. And then I would take out, yeah, okay. Uh, Leave it that other one the way it is. All right. It, can you live with it, Katrina? I'm good, just so long as staff knows what it means. Yeah, and, and yeah, and, and we the dates, we, we're what, what you always have to do in, in this process is remember the staff knows all the other stuff that they're doing and its impact. So that's why you're going to get dates. That for the win, that Marilyn, for the win, for the item that's evaluate and identify, I think we could change that to the, you know, June 30th. So that way, that's just part which of our... One are you, tell me which one you're talking about. The one she has her cursor on right now. And so what do you want to change? I, I, I want to get the staff more time for that one because that's a long term. That's more long term, and it can so, and it could feed nicely into the budget discussion. So when we bring the budget, we would be advising council of these are where we have the most significant gaps that we need to start building upon. So June thirtieth for that one. Well, we make it July first because we're doing the first or the fifth. Oh, okay, okay. All right, I'm moving you to the next one before we take a break because we only have an hour and fifteen minutes. We have three more goals and we have the next steps. Okay. So yeah. let's get to the next goal and I'm, as much I as possible, I need to move the Cosmas, Cosmas. And did you have one up here earlier? No. Um, it might not be a bad idea to give them a break now and I can do the rest. I'll okay. Let's take a, a break. Uh, let's take a break till five till and we have got to move you fast because I want to get you to do all this. Great. Good Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank, you, the, Thank the, you for having us. We look forward to seeing you in July. Thank you, Marilyn. You're Thank you. welcome. Thank bye you very bye. much. You're welcome. Thanks, Gail. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank bye. You. bye.